there. Just wait for the other squads to start making that rotation. Talking about Phoenix Legacy, who opted to drop north of them. And here's that 50-50 that we were mentioning earlier happening once again. I do like the loot setup that we have currently from Lufa, though. A frag demon out here with a nemesis and car. They're just going to be waiting on the high ground right now. I mean, Barometer that's only had a 4% win rate throughout the game. The enemy uh, is being fought so hard for right now. And it does surprise me, but at the same time, it is an awkward one for Ascend, who usually are a team who love to be able to just loot freely, avoid other teams, avoid the early fights. I remember speaking to Kashira about it after the Split 1 playoff, saying, yeah, we just want to be dropping in a location where we can avoid these fights, we can get the loot, and then we can start to think about our rotations. It is not it's so I know. by Bitfix. I... And it seems like... I... Keep getting the shield advantage on these drops. You absolutely want to take those here too, and that's even with Kashira being on the Loba, by the way, to get that extra loot that you mentioned, so that way they can maybe loot up and rotate quickly. But talking about loot, Slab out here already rocking the purple Evo. Eternal with their rotate. See the redeploy coming in from Slab. Just a little bit ahead of the rest of the team to see and navigate where the other squads that land around Mill are going to be rotating through. ¿Qué hacen muchachos? ¿Cómo están? Yo sé que están en inglés porque estamos viendo la transmisión. Pero pues les voy a estar tratando de narrar o de decir eh, los mejores equipos que tiene Europa. Por ejemplo, este equipo de acá, el equipo de Nasty, es buenísimo, weón. Y el equipo de Eternal que ustedes están viendo ahí también está bueno. Estos son, estos son los que les digo, los de los Pioneers, que son Nazca, Sirdel y Zayn. Los Nord también son muy buenos, eh. Los Nord también son muy buenos. So the ping's also going on here too. They took a bit of damage to make this rotate here, but we saw already two of the squads within this area. Is this finally gonna happen? Is Bitfix gonna try and make a push here? It's so difficult when you're on the low ground in this scenario, as Ascend know full well that they can just wait and bide their time, and they're so close oh. to getting a knock, and we'll get the first. Qué buena baja le hacen ahí, weón. Vamos a ver si bajan Ascend. Eso es de los mejores equipos que tiene Europa. Son Europa. Oriente Medio y África, bueno. Yeah, one member of Bitfix Gaming just getting a little bit too confident, and now it's going to be all down to Cracked here. Is even though he had an incredible week in match day number nine, a one versus three against one of Europe's best teams. This is going to be difficult. It's the revenge. They wanted this here. They're able to taste it in that last game now, after the position that Bitfix put themselves in in that choke point right behind where Cracked is. Gonna have to try to find an exit point if possible. The rampage is charged up. We know how much damage that rampage could do once it's revved up, but it's about the positioning that Cracked is currently in. Ascend aren't gonna be giving up those death boxes anytime soon. They could just sit happy there. Vamos a ver si este espera por los compas o se va. Yeah, because of where the circle is, it's not a massive rush for Ascend here, and they know full well if they try and go up any of these zips, they're just playing into Cracked's advantage and giving him an opportunity of this one versus three. They'll at least negate the possibility of picking up these death boxes first before they start thinking about a move. Speaking of moving, Vexed versus Danish happening over towards the mill. We saw so much action happening outside of mill currently. You know, Dailies is in contention here too, as Fave is going to be the first one to get knocked. Vex Gaming. Such a strong squad when it comes to the 3 3 deep fights. It's Danish. We saw what happened with Young Hong Kong riding it up to third place right now. He's dropping incredibly low, losing out on that shield. Bridge trying to give him some of that suppressed fire here. He is dancing around that bridge and that catwalk way as Vex Gaming take different angles to take care of Danish as the first squad to go down in the second game. Yeah, I was really expecting more from Danish in these early games on Storm Point, but E6 also having a little sniff towards Vex, looking to see whether they can pick up some pieces here. They do have two players on white armors at the moment, though, so this is not going to be easy and they may just have to back off. Are you kidding me right now? KCP, Jaylings, Vex, E6. Buena tumbada ahí por parte de Elemento 6. Bueno, Element 6. Or the 6th element. Hay uno y uno en el piso. Vamos a ver qué hacen. Van a tratar de sacar la teamfight. No, de hecho no. Vex, eh. estos fueron los ganadores del, del pasado. Bueno, 
with that squad in the end. Vexdenal doing the damage here, and E6 unfortunately got trapped between a rock and a hard place, or more importantly, Vexdenal. Al Vexdenal, tumba uno del Six Element, hola Daniel. Este, si le suman. And I want to see Jayling step up to the plate here today. They have been one of my favorite teams to watch in how they navigate these final circles when they get to the final circles. But they have had certain weeks where they've just been a little bit slow out of the blocks. Let's see whether they're a little bit more up the ante today as we jump into a listening with Jayling. Let's get back on the roof. Sí, Paila, escucharon mal, Pedro. Es que todos son decisiones de segundos, weón. Pailas. I'm gonna do it, okay? I was split from you, okay? Just be mindful. I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Two squads alive. Man. There's one. There's, okay. There's only one. Two. I did not. These, the these guys here. My my game. I'm gonna shoot this guy when I get a chance, so he knows I'm here. The beast team's playing far away, okay, guys? Who just charged that bitch? Yeah, uh, bridge, bridge, bridge. The beast team is playing so very submissive inside beast. They don't have any space out here. Good to, know. to be honest, to be honest, I don't think we should give up this space. Well, in Jaylings, they were having a little look towards Mill and they were looking to see whether they might push, but instead they backed off and you can just hear the discussions. They're trying to analyze now where the teams are, how many are left. Down Beast as a team that was turtling up, they said, but looks like Jaylings are just going to be staying put for now. However, over here, Be honest, though, Lord. Tratando de robarse las kills. Oh, qué buena granada. Esa granada, weón. No, muy. Muy no, parce, F, weón. Beavers are such an annoying team to play against for everyone in this lobby. As soon as you try and break away, it seems like they are watching like hawks, waiting, whether it be with charge rifle, whether it be with a scout, they've got something to pepper you from a distance. I don't know whether Fire Beavers are going to be able to convert this one, but they certainly have made life a living hell here for V2, who are just going to have to now try and escape the midst of Fire Beavers. No surprise from a team that's currently situated in third in the overall standings for EMEA right now. This is such a strong team, so consistent there too. And being able to ping that the Kraber package is dropping right to their north from where they're looking. So we can also note that from a lot of the squads that have already rotated from the middle area, that one of those teams could have a Kraber in their hand. So clearing up some of that extra space that the Fire Beavers want to look out for. Oh, the redeploy now coming in. Can they be able to get those shots going in with the Nemesis? A little tricky too to be able to catch a Valkyrie trying to go for the Skyward dive here. We're seeing a lot of action over here towards Mill, but it looks like V2 might have just been able to find a nook or a cranny to work with. But certainly all this noise will maybe alert the other teams. Jaylings might have sussed it out because you've got noises on the seer as well. The heartbeat sensor will be out, and now he can start to try and find where some of these weak players might be. Jaylings have not moved from this spot. JMW also rocking the gold R9. You love to see it. V2 just tried to... Aquí pailas, weón. Los de Jay... O sea, los de Jaylings... Tuvieron que no dejarlos caer. No dejarlos caer, weón. No darles esa oportunidad de que les pelearan... Bien ahí, por decirlo así. V2 doing very well at making themselves big here, taking up as much space in the mill, and if they can do enough damage, they may try and take the fight. 
We saw on the leaderboards, V2 have a lot of kills, but not as much placement. They are more of a team fighting squad who take advantage of those kill points rather so than placements, but they may just have to try and play placement here in this game. They're in a good spot. They're in mill. The circle is coming towards mill. And at the moment, there's only about five or six teams in this area. We are going to see in the next like minute and a half, maybe eight or nine teams all try and get into this next circle and they're going to have to take fights. And teams like KCP have been one of those squads to wait outside of Mill, trying to contest the squads that are going to be rotating through that bridge area. Thinking about 2R1C that rotate from down beast. They were the squad with the charge rifle in their hands as Aurora are taking this fight over Alliance in this choke point. A lot of rock, though, opportunities to just get out of the line of sight of Aurora that Alliance could take here. But they've lost Alliance could take here. And Aurora are winning in terms of the shield differences. Look at Cleef as he's trying to find a different position. Ranch is now trying to zoom right back through. They do get that first knock onto Hockey's, and this is going to set them up here so that way they close in the gap the line's already losing one as you say and it's gonna be a tough two versus three here unless someone else gets involved in the fight and helps them with some of the damage alliance are typically better on world's edge we don't see them perform as well on storm point but they are the number one team in the region right now they have the most points they're already qualified for LAN, and of course they love that extra prize money for winning here in the regional finals it mm -hmm. might just have to be effect staying alive because foot they get involved and you ask and you shall receive foot esports seeing the opportunity to get involved on this fight and to get involved on the high ground here too the fighting has ceased for right now the lions have taken a bit of traducción disparan disparan bien 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 rap rap fire fire no la traducción bueno lo que están hablando aquí es de que como están peleando rotando ya saben the entirety of the northeast side before they push in so this is going to be a big one maestro recognized it's going to be a big one because they're also getting involved in this scrap but they've lost one as well they have a kramer Ooh. to work with though as north gets absolutely obliterated amazing trade here because now they could go for the res after getting that knock on for him let's say he's part of the hollow que buen disparo de kramer weón que le dio la oportunidad de salvar al compañero y aparte reventa al otro a slow old phoenix kit as maestro have been able to take the building alliance somehow back on their feet by the way of all three of them it looked pretty dismal when they were getting pushed earlier and after those knocks happened but effect was able to stay alive eventually get the reses and now alliance can really threaten the lobby from this side of the northeast now as this circle closes though we've got four teams that are all going to have to move in at the same time so it's going to be about biding your time when can you get in alliance can utilize newcastle to give them some cover though Rugby again, Noth. He just finally recovered from this Kraber shot. Get shot again with the Kraber again. Cleave hanging out on the low ground into the lovely line of sight of Alliance. Gonna be able to take opportunity of that as Maestro and Phoenix Legacy in your feeds get wiped out. 13 squads left right now. And Effect is just on a different level here. You see those with those 2k keys, but this player is such a frag heavy player. They're jumping on top of the heads of what is left of Aurora to clean up the other side of the circle before they make their way into that final circle here. Another last player here before them to finish off. And that's going to be it wow. for Foot Esports. So many of these teams that got involved in this fight. Let's not forget how this all started here, Dan. Alliance had to reset, managed to get everybody up and alive, get healthy, put down the Newcastle wall. And yeah, see what I said to this team of G Linkson. It was not to leave to this, to the B2. That these were the ones that almost died with the grenades that they threw out in the car. And they left to leave, to leave, to position, and then they heard them. No, they didn't. What they just did was incredible by surviving on that northeast side and then getting all the KP to follow, which puts them in a position where they now are going to dominate that side of the map. But they still have to move in from the northeast side. They're still going to be held out by probably two or three teams here. The squads to focus on, for me, Vex to a holding center of mill. You saw two members of V2 still alive. And Fire Beavers on the southern side that they've been holding for so long are going to be a real threat in this final circle. With the rotation that Alliance has going through that choke point that leads into Mill, where they're going to be playing off that low ground into that open area, we can expect maybe one or two squads to be there too. I know for Ascend, we saw it in the feed earlier. Kashera is the only one alive. He is in the Loba, but at this point, yeah, it's not even going to be possible here. And he's probably just going to be waiting for an opportunity to rat it up. As 2R1C on top of Pride Rock right now, trying to land some of these wingman shots. He didn't land one real petty here as Uchaku is going to be waiting on the other side just to find an opportunity where the other rotating squads are in. Effect actually take it to the skies. They clip the rock here, but they at least get right over the cliff. Is it going to be enough though? He's stuck. He's What's about happening? to go down. No. Are you kidding me? They took
took the risk and to take that circle damage, they died in the middle of that redeploy. I mean, quite literally from heroes to zeros when you see what they just did, but they went for a risk. They felt like the rotation wasn't going to happen as 2R1C come bounding into Mill to try and get some kills, but the revive might happen. You've got the gold knock to at least get full health or at least half health when you get back up. 2R1C, one of our better storm point teams, by the way. Fire Beavers may be the only team that's ahead of them throughout regular season. 2R1C have found so much success. They've had three wins throughout the season as well. And if they can get into that top five and get into that top three, they have shown time and time again they can find victories. KCP out here have not left from the building that they, we saw them take over at the very beginning of this game, and they've been able to clean up so much KP from the stragglers that are forced to rotate in their direction, exiting out of those two buildings on the outskirts of Mill. Tour 1C, they are not in that line of sight. They're hanging out on the second building of Mill. You can see where KCP currently is, neighboring that across the field from start of fight inside of the other building. But the moment either of these teams have to rotate out, Dan, they're going to be rotating into the lovely line of sight of Vex. It's not going to be an easy rotation, that's for sure. Vex is going to have keen eyes on it. Fire Beaver's still alive. By the way, they're halfway to match point now. They're on 25 points already, so a victory here plus kills, and they would be closing in on what, around 40 points, potentially. So we're looking at maybe teams reaching match point by three, if not four, depending on if we can see the consistency from the likes of Fire Beavers. SAF just a little bit behind. They're on 24, and you can see they're still alive as well. So we've got two of our biggest hitters at the moment in the final seven. We need to cut that down from seven to at least five. I think two teams are probably going to fall in the next 30 seconds or so when these circles start to close. Oh, Nasty gets burned out here. He's got that Hemi ready. Hey, right above him here is the fifth circle is going to be closing in right behind them. Oh, they're forced to rotate out. Going to be able to try to find some breathing opportunity to hang out on the outside of this building that they initially had taken over. That tried it on the other side too to close in the gap. Fire Beavers now finding the opportunity to also get sent over to the side of Mill, but into the line of sight of Vex. The creeping broads doing just enough to take care of Taskmaster. Certified also get eliminated in the feed as six squads are still alive. Fire Beavers trying to do what they can in a two versus X at the moment. Might be able to get the res if they're lucky. What? Vex though <laughs> depends whether they want to push up. Quise arma el mierdero ya. Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro, cinco equipos ahí en donde, weón. F, muere F. Cuatro equipos. Último, último anillo ya como tal. Último cierre, perdón, ya último cierre. El primer equipo en morir va a ser este. Este va a morir. Después de este equipo, de estos dos que están acá, lástima porque es el cierre del el Zen, son muy buenos. Después de este equipo va a morir este de acá. Échenle ojo, exactamente en ese orden Vea, estos son los primeros en morir Vamos a ver en dónde caen Sí, no, ya murió Como se salvó, weón. F, les dije. Sí, señores. El equipo del matar. Es el nuevo equipo del Matafe, me gustaba mucho cómo jugaba. 
Bueno, siempre me ha parecido que juega muy bien el Matafe. Este es el Matafe, para los que no lo conocen. Buena partida para ese huevón. A equipo. Talking about their evolution as a team, combining those elements of the team fighting that they've always been so good at with the composure to finish off these end zones and play with the patience and the macro sense that they know they need to perform well at land. This is looking like a Vex team that is putting it all together today, certainly. Dan, yeah, take a break. We're going to get Vicky back in here and talk a little bit posting again, post game because Vex started this all off running into a team that had performed extremely well in game one. That was Danish. Danish, though, getting a little unlucky going against unlucky with Vex. They end their story a little too early this time around, and eventually Vex ended up taking the game. Yeah, and Unlucky just played that last game amazingly. I believe him by himself just got 7 KP to his name, so aside from taking that dub, they had a good amount of KP that they could work with. Like we heard Dan talking about before, trying to speed the run their way into a race sitting at match point. This is definitely the way to do it, especially if you're going to be able to stay consistent as we move over to World's Edge for map yeah. number 3. Well, let's take a look at the final circle because there was a storyline underneath what we saw in terms of action. Over the course of these seasons, of this season particularly, we've seen 2R1C have great performances. They've been able to place in top three and top four several times, but all the times they've played in group A versus B, they've actually got an average placement score of 7.5, 7.8 points, which is a far cry from their eight and a half, 18 and a half average they have in a versus c or in their other matchups what does that mean it means teams like kcp and 2r1c tend to be difficult and 2r1c has a troubling time standing amongst those big giants in group b this is different though actually 2r1c and kcp fight again 2r1c get the benefit of it and vex is kind of able to just kind of perfunctorily show up and get the w but i think it was a great story to showcase how these two teams who have constantly gone up against each other and had trouble actually ended up Going the way of 2R1C this time around, even though it's just an extra placement point. You said it before, Unlucky is the story, Vicky. Talk about these stats already that he's just putting up. Yeah, he put 1,700 damage on the board here, 7 KP, 5 assists on top of that. And when you take a look at the kill leaders in, in the entirety of EMEA, Unlucky is literally top five. I believe he's fourth overall, right behind Zane, yeah. who we've seen go crazy there too. And Unlucky is very consistent in managing to get enough KP to keep the rest of Vex Gaming alive here. But all the individual players on Vex Gaming are heavy frag demons. So that's why I'm not too surprised to see them not only come out on top, but to walk away with a good amount of points after that second game. Overall, game two leads us here in terms of our scores for that game. 26. You guys knew it would be a big one. That is a great score already halfway through to our match point threshold 11 for v2 who have performed well this time getting most of it from placement to our 1c we mentioned that storyline with kcp they get the better end of it in terms of the fight Ushako actually picking up that last kill and getting the extra placement but pioneer still outperform in terms of overall points they will take our third spot and rounding it out with fire beavers in number five vicky some teams who need to keep picking it up aurora finds themselves on the back half of this yet again yeah, we, this is a team that we're all looking at. We want to see Aurora come back out here. They were able to qualify for land in that last split, but they unfortunately were not able to show up. And now we want to see them be able to contest again for the second split of land. They need to be showing up. Jayling's another team that we usually always talk about, also on this second half of the page here. It was just match number two as well, though, Ray Day. Mm. I'm taking a look at Bitfix Gaming that are still contesting Ascend, but Ascend getting the better hand over them for that second game, too. Still waiting to see if we can shift out of this kind of steady contest, this little metronomic pace that we've seen so far. All these games kind of appearing like everyone's uh, yeah, as a gentleman's agreement, but there is certainly going to be crunch time coming up soon. It's Vex Gaming, Fire Beaver, Start a Fight, Darwin C and Pioneers. Vex particularly only 16 points away. One decent game, definitely one win away from starting into that match point, meaning once they get over 50, they have a chance to win 
and end it all. It could be the time that you have to perform because guess what? If that happens, it's over. Wherever you're standing now is where you end up. So teams are going to be scrambling. I expect to see the pace pick up here as we head into game three. But before we do that, let's take another interview moment with Mark, who had a chance to talk more, just not about ballistic, but uh, I believe he was able to talk about the ballistic meta and how he might fit in for these high level players and maybe just casual players like some of you watching at home. these worlds remembered the name August Brinkman yeah, he's an aggressive playstyle by the sound of things sort of lends himself to to ballistic um, team utility is going to be interesting where about in the legend meta do you see him sitting uh, in comparison to some of the other legends yeah so our goal with uh, anything we add new to the game particularly as we saw with like the nemesis like with the new legends we want to like make them the pick for the season make this we want him to be like the go-to assault pick uh, and so the hope is that he, with his ability to single out and target and use his ultimate to coordinate team pushes he can be really strong against countering aggressive teams or be that really powerful initiator and, you know, I, I cast the ALGS. I love myself some competitive Apex. Uh, how do you think it's going to shake up the competitive meta? Do you think he's going to slot into some of these uh, compositions we see? Uh, potentially. I mean, I, I feel like the pros are always hesitant when they uh, see uh, new new legends, new things coming out the, on the world. But I think he's coming in hot, and I think hopefully he is able to shake that up. Kind of maybe, uh, you know, serve as that push list team that likes to hunker down against, like, the people who you would use Watson or Caustic or Gibby and try to push on that. But... We'll see. I mean, they always the pros always surprise us how they play the game because they play in ways you never expect when you're designing uh, uh, throughout the throughout the process. I'm gonna say right now, by the way, I can see Furia using ballistic. They love to push things. They love to get fights done. I'm just, Furia ballistic. I can see them going hand in hand. WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for us to get into yet another map. Match number three is about to go down, and we're flipping the maps this time after Vex had a huge amount of success on the final game of Stormpoint. World's Edge is where we're heading, though. Not the changes quite there yet, Dan. They're coming in a couple of days, but certainly a map where we expect some changes in our gameplay. Yeah, and I think that, you know, Vex to be able to win match two, get ever closer to match point here going into World's Edge is great for them. They're a match point team. They're a team who performed very well on World's Edge as well. Probably the top three, I would say, they are in when it comes to World's Edge performances alongside the likes of Alliance and Fire Beavers, who have all had success throughout this regular season. So Vex very much looking like the favorites right now to get to match point first. Yeah, a really, really strong game. 26 points, if I wasn't mistaken. I mean, going over halfway to getting the job done, and they had some decent points in that first game as well. So, like you say, Vex certainly the front runners at the moment. And just a reminder as well, with some of our drop spots coming up, the Vex and Alliance are in a battle for first place. You can see Alliance over at Thermal Station, Dan, but Vex with a very, very strong POI as well. Yeah, Thermal Station with a 14.8% win rate across the season throughout the EMEA region. Uh, and most of that is because of Alliance and how they've been performing. When it comes to Lava Cypher, only a 7.4%. Bueno, partida 3, si no estoy mal. Wins on World's Edge, but have found a lot of points. We've seen most of our success on this map over at Sky West and Trials, actually, which is where you're going to be seeing E6 drop today. So be keeping a keen, e keen eye on them and how they're performing. As for Fire Beavers at Fragment, it has been about an 11% win rate for them from that drop spot as well. So you certainly expect them to have a big shout on this map to be able to perform and potentially pick up some victories as well. Countdown maybe hasn't had the success that SAF would have want. We've seen zero wins from Countdown throughout this entire region, which means it just hasn't been one of the best drop spots to go for. But of course, it all matters where those circles are going to be pulling. But as I said, it's Element 6 who have the advantage when it comes to statistics across this map on World's Edge. And I can't wait to see whether they can increase those statistics or whether they might change a little bit. And the only statistic I think that everybody's going to want to increase is the amount of points that are going to be picked up. At the moment, Vex Gaming leading the way with 34 points overall. So a game somewhat similar. 
and would be very nice for Vex, of course, that we just saw on that last game, would put them on that match point threshold, Dan, and we could be all of a sudden looking at teams kind of looking over their shoulders and thinking, is this Vex? Is that Vex over there? And do we have to kill Vex? Do we overextend to kill Vex? I've said Vex a lot I mean, in that sentence. Sorry. Even I, when I wake up, Vex. I'm like, is it Vex? Because they're terrifying. They're everywhere. They have been incredible this season. They did flop a little bit at split one playoffs, though, and I want to see them have this same success throughout regular season, regional finals, and then see what they're made of when they get to playoffs and when they get to LAN, because we know what they're capable of, but it seems like the playstyle just changed a little bit when it came to LAN performance. Uh, it's been an interesting day, by the way, in terms of compositions. We've seen a few changes here or there. We've seen Ascend playing Horizon, for example, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. Maybe that's down to the contest that they had against Bitfix Gaming. Perhaps it'll be a little bit more comfortable for them now they move over to World's Edge. Yeah, I think uh, something to keep in mind as well. Uh, it's good that we get a bit of time here just before the game gets going to talk about Vex and that performance because the last two games we've seen in the regional finals, they played really zone heavy. Yes, zone one certainly favoured them getting you know priority position, but the second match that we just saw there over at the mill, they got there really early and one important engagement. So it looks like Matafe is making some really good zone calls for the team and they're making those really, really sharp rotations, which was the key to success for a lot of the teams who got to that finals lobby and really competed at the split one playoffs. But for now, it's all about changing that up. Are the zone calls going to be just as good here on World's Edge? You mentioned their win rate hasn't been great here on World's Edge. It's time for that statistic to change. Yeah, we want to see all the teams now just trying to blow those statistics out of the window make a new statistic for yourself here in regional finals and just show up big circle coming up though it's going to matter where we're going to be heading and it's going to be looks like just on the eastern side maybe might even be fragment in general where we end up could pull towards overlook and it does pull towards overlook okay so jay ling's in prime position right now and they're gonna be very happy they have the ring console information they'll know exactly that everyone's going to be joining them at their poi that was a really good pause you did there, by the way. You went, it you was amazing, towards, wasn't it? And then the circle popped, and you went, yeah, overload. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were going to say that even if it didn't. I know. Of I course, know of course. I, of yeah, course yeah. you were. But you're quite right. Jaylings are going to have a, a great bit of priority to this zone. Going to be able to control that drill tower and put some great shots down. But Bitfix Gaming, love a contest, Dan. And we're contesting here once again on World's Edge. And it's almost expected i think when you are the last team to get into regional finals you're the bottom of the lobby i think there's a little bit element of disrespect maybe that you're not going to be given a drop spot you don't deserve one so you have to fight for it and we've seen that big fix gaming they did have a couple of okay fights versus ascend but they were never really able to find those final kills to be able to take full advantage of a poi yeah, this is going down over acclimatizer at the moment and you can see some shots have been exchanged but nobody has really managed to get any impactful damage yet that has turned into that first knock it looks like bitfix gaming want to try and maybe collapse on one player that they've seen or maybe just try and take the height away from the team that's around them it's bcgo who are around them at the moment and you can see it looks like a little bit of a split of loot they had a little poke they had a little prod a little bit of shoulder kind of shoulder to shoulder action going on but nobody really getting that knockout blow and this is frustrating for VCGO as well. Remember, they're one of our bubble teams. They are joint ninth at the moment coming into today's action. And when we are only giving, what, nine playoff spots plus the extra spot for the winning team of today, if Vortex are being contested throughout the day, this is going to make it so awkward for them to try and find those points and try and push themselves up the leaderboard. So they need to either get out of this fight or assert some dominance early. But it looks like that fight is going to stagnate ever so slightly. And it's Ascend being contested again. Yeah, it looks like uh, 2R1C who dropped over at Lava City have rotated all the way over to Dome to where Ascend are to try and cause them straight up some problems by the looks of things. And one of the reasons that Dome is seen as somewhat of a lesser POI is because of this third party opportunity. You kind of get trapped between teams coming from Launch Site and Lava City and it's pretty difficult. The loot pool's not particularly great in comparison to some of the other POIs, but Ascend have already proved that if they see a little opportunity to leave and reposition away from a fight where they're taking a bit of damage, they're really really solid at it and they've managed to do exactly that again it's been interesting to watch the development of ascend and how they maneuver their way through contests because ascend for me have always been a team that kind of switch on the elevator music they loot freely they avoid other teams and then they play for placement and they're one of the best teams at doing that or have been previously but then as the season's gone on in both split one and split two there has been teams that have said actually we're going to try and take ascend here because they might just run away and give us free loot Ascend goo one of two things. If they feel like they're up in the fight, if they feel like they have the armor advantage, they will take it, and quite often they do win. But if they feel like they're at any sort of disadvantage, that's when they get out. A couple of shots being exchanged once again. Over here at Lava Siphon, it's going to be for eSports who have taken the high ground, the platform overlooking Vex Gaming, who are inside of this 
building they're looking at right now. No real, again, impactful damage being done, but Vex certainly have an armor advantage when it comes to HP. Life in and Noth, the only two players who are dressed in blue at the moment. Taylor's still looking a little bit underdressed, shall we say, in that white armor. And I think the smart thing to do here for both teams is just let each other rotate. However, Noth trying to get a few pop shots in with this longbow. Certainly could slow things down, and maybe they're trying to line one up on the, uh, on the redeploy balloon here. The real question is whether Vex even want to take this one. They have the lead at the moment. Just it looks like Vex is still looting. Vex is still needing things. They're still needing weapons and. Tanta bala que se han dado no se ha matado nadie, weón. Nadie. Because whether they want to take it, I think they're more likely to think about their rotation, as you say. I mean, the Vex of old might say, "Well, who dare challenge us? We will absolutely take this three v three." But I think a Vex who looks at how close they are to match point already might start to think about their rotation, as are the Gaiman Gladiators as they move into no net. Yeah, it looks like it's a battle for the Dorito at the moment, and there's a fuse, and that's always a surprise. See, the Knuckle Cluster goes down, a couple of grenades being exchanged, and Gaiman Gladiators, who might have thought they'd be able to win that fight, and win that, I should say, race for the building, now find themselves having to back off. Hardecki does some damage, but again, no impactful damage. No knock is going to come off the back of it, and that's kind of been the story so far in these lobbies. Yeah, and you mentioned the fuse. We see more variety here on World's Edge in terms of legend selection. We've got an Ash in the lobby, Newcastle, Wraith, Fuse, Crypto, Horizon, Bang. Like, they are the kind of off picks rather than the standard Seer and Valkyrie, which seems to be holding the majority. We have 16 teams on both Seer and Valkyrie, and then everyone else is trying to find something that kind of fits in and there between. The other interesting one that we saw was Fire Beavers running the Crypto in Stormpoint, and whether that will carry on over to World's Edge and whether they will feel like that will help them, but certainly it gave them that extra little bit of info and was allowing them to get that beacon information earlier on. Well, it looks like Vex are going to maybe catch Foot off guard here, unless Foot have got a rotation to make, or they have a Valkyrie redeploy to hit the skies and overtake Vex. That's the only other way that you can get through this situation. Haven't taken too much damage in the skies by the looks of things. Going to take a few pop shots, but nothing that's going to cause them problems. Vex might try and think about overextending to chase this one down, but but esports should be able to land in a position here where they avoid the line of sight of Vex and should be able to reset. So, pretty smart decision from both teams. And just to go back to Vex and your confidence, you kind of brought up a really good point about are they going to want to rotate quickly here to this zone? Is it something that's going to be slowed down by the engagement here with for esports? We should kind of remind ourselves as well that. Vex are very capable of playing edge. It's something they made their name of. It's, it's kind of how they put up those huge point totals that we saw previously. So they're able to adapt. And speaking of adapt, for esports from a position where they're trying to overtake Vex, now might be able to cut off this angle and isolate this player with the catalyst wall. Yeah, the versatility of some of these squads is very important. Whether you have to play edge or zone, it's just about recognizing what position you're in, where you've dropped, where the circle is pulled, and what loot you have and the teams that are around you. There's all these different variables that have to be taken into consideration when you plan your game, and that's why Apex Legends is the best to watch when it comes to match point and when it comes to these incredible games, as Vex now will be able to just hold out in the position they're in. 2R1C looks like they're going to back off from their rotation and move even deeper round, uh, which isn't going to be necessarily particularly fun for them. Vex Gaming on the hunt once again for Foot Esports. Esports, I think their decision was to try and hit a ring console and get a little bit more information because you can see they didn't have that zone info. Some shots coming in from North. North again, just to remind Matafe that they are aware they're trying to push. And if I hit you with a headshot with that longbow, you're certainly going to regret the decision you're making. But it looks like finally the chapter will close on this battle we've seen going down for quite some time. And Vex Gaming are going to think about the rotate, trying to play edge pretty solid here with the zone starting to close behind them as well. But again, 20 squads remaining here, Dan. Just poke damage, prod damage, but everybody in the lobby still on their feet. Yeah, and a lot of teams at Overlook, at No Name, there's even a couple of teams around the Vault area, and that was why I was worried about 2R1C's rotation, because they're pushing through Vault, and they're going to be held out by the likes of Eternal, and when they back out of it, they're probably going to run into Foot, for example, when Foot eventually arrive. It looks like Vex are going to completely avoid that guy's side, and they're instead going to make a move through on this southwest side, where they may meet Alliance, because you always know, if you're moving from the southwest side, there is a likelihood that Alliance could be there. And at the moment, Alliance are hovering around Fragment East. You can see on this map overlook that Fire Beavers are still doing Fire Beavers things, doing their crazy rotation up towards Survey and Skyhook and sitting in the red, getting those armors up and joining the fight late. Well, one team that I just want to point out here, if you look just to the right of the center of that zone, 
What a rotation it's been from Ascend, managing to make their way into the position they find themselves in. That's a really good spot for the end zone as well, especially if it pulls a little bit towards No Name or into Overlook. You kind of got that flexibility. If it goes to No Name to fight from the high ground and slide your way down. And oh, speaking of fighting your way and sliding your way down, well, 2R1C have just caught life in off guard and they're going to be able to finish him quite comfortably here. 2R1C who weren't quite able to get the points totals they would have expected maybe on storm point but they still find themselves in fourth and they still are a threat to this lobby as you've got to make sure you're as close to 50 getting into that game four as possible because as we've seen in other regions we saw fanatic win in four games which was a new record in the match point format and we'll have to see whether vex can maybe try and match it here if vex were to find a victory they would more than likely be on match point going into match number four well, we're going over to the action now, and this is the truck just outside of Overlook and No Name that certainly will be an area that people are trying to hold down for quite some time. Hackis gets the first knock. Ale uh, effect, excuse me, does take a good amount of damage, though, and is forced to retreat. But taking down Taskmaster, Hackis with the Rampage in his hands has got the weaponry to do so. And Fire Beavers, who tried to force their way into zone, are now falling one by one here. Yeah, that might be the end of Fire Beavers, or at least their end of their chances of surviving as a three. Nine Impulse has been able to escape the vice of alliance for now but i wonder how long this is going to last because not just alliance had eyes on fire beavers but it seems like the rest of the lobby also had eyes on fire beavers they know now the strategy they know where fire beavers are going to be moving from and it seems like people were just already in a position to make things very awkward indeed oh. so nine imps is just about trying to survive for as long as possible but it's looking pretty dismal and yeah, nine impulse is uh stuck between a rock and a hard place at the moment and walked the wrong way down a tr tunnel and it Almost felt like a train was coming the other way as he took those shots. In the kill feed, though, you can see Horizon Union taking some damage. It's Bitfix Gaming who are involved. Seerolts are down on either side. Trix is having a bat in the back, and Zerif is having to give up that high ground. This is the fight that could have happened so much earlier on, but it's eventually happening now between Bitfix and VCGO. Trix back to full health. Cracked also going up into the sky. Tries to crack the opposition player, but now just has to desperately try and bat, and it's not looking good for BFG. Fire Beavers eliminated in the meantime. That will be the end of their game in number three. No points on the board really for them to talk about here, but start a fight now. End the fight. As Bitfix Gaming will be caught off guard, they will be eliminated as well. So as the zone starts to close, the action starts to pick up here. Start a fight now, taking the high ground. Lackey on the Valkyrie, the wingman in his hands, and in some decent shots as well through that Dark Veil. Remember, SAF, they were in 11th coming into today's match day. They were only four points short of the likes of 2R1Z and VCGO, who they are currently fighting against. It would do them wonders to be able to take the likes of VCGO out in these early stages. I know it's not that early in this game, but in terms of how many teams we've lost, it certainly would be early to get taken out. But VCGO have found a building to reside in for now. They utilize the Dark Veil to be able to escape. Horizon Union down to two. This Phoenix... Perfectly times the med kit as always. Just something else to note that's going on. Foot Esports did manage to get back to a three. We did see that knock in the finish come in, but they got the beacon. They got the, uh, sorry, they got the banner. Then they got to the beacon. They managed to get their teammate back in, but they're deep in the zone at the moment and are being held out by V2. So really tough, tough decisions to make for them. But as we can see in front of us, this is a little bit more where we're going to see the end game start to take shape. Really good rotations coming in from the likes of Phoenix Legacy. You can see him holding down that truck. KCP trying to hold... Out a couple of teams as well as Nasky is having a little poke and a little pod trying to get some armor checks but start a fight they're gonna have to fight their way in unless that zone pulls to them which is very unlikely to do by the information we have yeah I mean this zone is more than likely pulling closer and closer towards overlook and it's a difficult circle to navigate because about 70% of it is just open ground it's mountain range or it's on the other side of overlook which you can't even play anyway so if you've got the buildings inside of overlook you're in the prime position so that's going to be jaylings and danish the two favorites i would say right now unless anyone decides to dive on them and take the fight they look like the more likely to be winning match number three here well start fire gonna have to do exactly what their name says zone is closing and it's a perfect time to jump into a listening Faltan dos anillos más, weón. Se acaba la partida de 18 equipos. Okay. Tell me when. 
anything, like spam things through here this and in this land bottom, okay? They, they might mirror them. I'm going right, I'm going right to spot yeah, the by rocks. Time, by time, by time, rocks, by time. Rocks looks free, rocks looks free. Okay, do we rocks? have wall, do we have wall? Yeah, 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 yes, we, yes, we, yes, yes. we have wall, land, land in front and wall box if needed, wall box if needed, just chill. We should be okay. we should be able to survive. Popping bat. Play on this side now, play on this side, we have spray on this side now. Yep. Team walking up from bottom. Um, I, should, back. I, should, I should them so they know. Can't go here, can't go here. Down here, down here. Yeah, yeah, kills. Okay, they, they went into the, into the tunnel, we are chilling. Can we hold no, the box? Look at right, look at right side. Yeah, look at right side, Blast, and put kills. Lucky, look back to him. I'm getting fused here. We are hard chilling this time. All good, all good. Keep looking, keep looking. I'm trying to spot. We have horizon, this is I'm, horizon. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to spot, I'm trying to spot. Kill, kill, kill. Give me time. Kill, kill, kill. Wait, that's a duo, that's a duo, that's a different yeah. team, that's good. Okay. Just you need to shoot them, you need to shoot them, I'm gonna I'm try kidding. to stick you. Dying down the hill, dying my ping, we can spot that maybe. Wait, 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 okay, keep looking at backs, I need to spot, I need to spot. Give me time, give me time. Yeah, give me time. There's guy in front of me. Yeah, they're here. Lucky, watch your back. I'm watching here, yes, I'm watching. Guy died. They're rolling, they're rolling, they're crossing to they're crossing to you. Okay, okay. No, no, they're gonna be here, they're gonna be here, we'll be fine. 50 sir, cash sir. We're gonna get someone to the back. 50 flash. What? Right here, right here, right here. Okay, okay. You guys get kills. You guys get kills. I need to, I need to look for a play. Nice play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, is this a three? I don't see them. I don't see the team. I don't see the team here. Okay, you can take space, but we play on me, I think, anyway. Okay. It looks open, but I don't want to just walk I'm into I'm gonna it. play in between. Guys, 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 listen. There is ledge on me we can play, but this is like really scuffed. But we, we should be able to survive. Zipping, 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 zipping. zipping, zipping. Here. Here. Just get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Chill, chill, chill. Don't get big damage. Don't get big damage. Don't get big damage. Chill, 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 chill. As we come out of the listening and back into the comms, Dan, SAF making the plays as they try and force their way into zone. They managed to make a really good rotation to this spot, but now they've got to look for that next play. You could hear the calls coming in. Yeah, I love it. Just you guys can focus on kills. I need to focus on the plays. He needs to assess the areas, assess what's free. He thinks there's a couple of scuffed places they could potentially play, but it is not going to be easy for them. If they try and walk it in, they would have to take a fight, which again would be living up to their name. They did some good damage on the team just north of them, but maybe they want to just wrap around a little bit to try and find a more comfortable position. Well, some of the teams have got eliminated in that listening, just to point it out. Footwell out, Vortex gone, Maestro, Alliance, and Ascend just fought, fell as well. And Lackey looking to add to that tally of people who are falling. 2 r one c and V2 also eliminated. The lobby has been cut in half. We are down to just 10 as Phoenix Legacy also fall on their backs. Eternal waited the entire game to take out 2R1C, by the way, in the vault. And now they're going to have to force their way past Vexed, who are already getting knocks onto them. So it looks like they are going to be at their demise. SAF might be able to pick up the pieces onto this. But Matafe's gone down. So Vexed, remember, they're our leaders. They're on 42 points. They are eight points away from reaching match point already. If they were to get into the top three, it would guarantee them being on match oh point goodness. going into match number four. I mean, that Q hit pretty hard. The Missile Swarm really doing some damage to SAF, but SAF managing to just stabilize. And now with the cat wall down and the zero down as well, they're looking to clean up these final pieces onto Vexed. Yeah, this is going to be tough for Vexed as a two. They're going to have to move away. Matafe will eventually be eliminated. So Vexed will run with their tail between their legs, but they've gained so many points already. E6 also wiped out of the lobby. There's now seven squads remain as SAF are still hunting down Vexed, who might just be able to escape into the zone. Yes, they're going to say, let's go up into the skies and see what we can find. Problem is, is the lobby going to just chip away at them are they going to be able to land i think they want to try and take the height here and yes they'll be able to land and take the height and not only take the height they've got the space as well you can see a lucky up on one of these silos his teammate tyler's managed to take the other one as well so saf get the knock but vex survive and make a miracle play and that could be the play dan but i don't get ahead of myself here with enough placement points here with the kills that they've got we could be seeing them approach match point it's very possible, as I said, if they're able to rat their way into a top three. Okay, it's not a rat. They are a combination of rats at this point. They are holding hand in hand as they are on both of those silos at the moment as they just watch what's going to be happening below them. The only detriment will be if another team jets up into the sky and notices they are vulnerable there just as solos on each silo. Pioneers are already pinging it. They know full well as here comes SAF. Do they try and take this fight? Looks like they're going to take the other silos though, but they're going to get shredded. All of the damage coming in. Onto... Último anillo, siete equipos. Este ya valió caca ahí donde está, obviamente. Pioneers trying to force the fight from the low ground as well. Wow. Trying to do that damage. SAF will be eliminated as Pioneers now rise the...
themselves up. Zane takes the hype, and now he's gonna get shredded. And it was Vex that were able to get so much of that damage as well, as Vex now find themselves into the top five. Horizon Union get eliminated, and look at the position from Vex. Are we gonna start to look at our first team on match point here? We're so close. Both safe as well in that next zone. They have the ultimate high ground. Jaylings down on the ultimate low ground. And it looks like Vex want to try and take even more space here. Unlucky. Making some aggressive plays, which I love. And also probably trying to see if he can get some more light ammo. He's going to get 300 of it. And it's the lead that Vex have as well. If they were on to match point now, the closest team would be SAF on 30 points. That 20 points away from match point threshold. Vex could be setting themselves up for two games potentially open to try and find the victory here in Amir in the regional finals. But it isn't quite done yet. They still have to make sure they get into this top three so they can secure some extra placement points. But it's certainly looking good right now. Great work from our observers to give you the lay of the land where every single team is set up towards this end game. Aurora, my goodness, they need this win. Got some decent KP already, but they need the placement points to multiply it to give them a chance of forcing their way into a regional finals. And with Vex playing the way they are, Dan, we've got to remember our bubble teams might be in a position where they're running out of games to get points now. Yeah, it's a scary thing. You're used to having six matches to be able to pick up all your points and make sure you position yourselves to try and pick up the overall standings. But we could see this end in potentially four, if not five, with how Vex are playing right now. So you've just got to make sure you try and secure as much as possible in these final moments if you are one of those bubble teams. Vanish could cause a problem here to Vex, though. You can see the thermal megascope, as I love to call it, on the longbow. Doing some damage through the smokes. Not enough to get the knock, though. Unlucky. Tiptoeing forward. What's the next play here for Vex as the zone starts to close, though? That's the question. Are they going to get focused? The teams know that that's Vex. Aurora trying to make some moves as well. A sunset combines with the R99 of Cleave here to get the knock onto Young Hong Kong. Remember, five points required. Top three would do it for Vexed. You'd imagine as Aurora now doing some damage from across. They do have the Dark Veil to work with. Members of Danish are going down here and Danish will get eliminated. So now suddenly there's four squads and Aurora have just lost one as well. It's looking good for Vex right now. Three points away from match point. Vex just got to eliminate or contribute to eliminating one team. Aurora taking damage. Zero goes down just to stall this fight out a few more moments. Jailings will be forced out, forced up from that high low ground, excuse me, pretty soon. As Jailings do poke, and the RE45 here of Nags is gonna do damage. KCP collapsing onto Aurora as well. They are being pinched from so many sides. KCP and Jailings both doing damage to Aurora, but now Zane is cooking with that thermite. Where are Vex, though? Are they going to be able to stay alive long enough to get into this top three and maybe even get a kill? Not lucky goes down. There's only going to be one remember remaining from Vex as KCP also losing Vex go out in fourth. Vex have not done enough and will not be on match point. One more game at least. Zane trying to stick the res. The zone is coming in, but the sky nade from Noises absolutely obliterates him as Nagnus now moves in. Jaylings in a position to maybe win this game. The RE45 from the care package once again causing so much damage, so many problems. Qué buena, weón. Pero la aguantaron muy bien nosotros, o sea, tampoco fue. Sí. Waiting the entire game to get any action, but when the action did unfold, Jaylings were ready, they were primed, they were waiting for everyone to walk into their home territory and they pull off a victory and they show why they are one of the big threats in this region. As for Vex, they are so close, they are three points away from match point. You'd have to assume they're going to get there in match number four, but they didn't quite get there in match number three. Hell of an effort, though, you have to say. Hell of an effort from Vex. We'll bring Rain Day back into the uh, conversation because Vex so close. So close. One placement point off as a duo, but not close enough. Not close enough. And those singular placement points, fellas, we've seen in many match day finals, they don't come as easy when you just need one. It tends to be that game you drop and get just 50 50 right away it tends to be that game you make it almost to 14th place but then you lose at 15th and you don't get the placement point all these things are possible so vex they have to stay on the awareness for next game but game one let's talk a little bit about in in world's edge i think this kind of set the tone now things are starting to get serious mark these teams especially in that final circle you could see how competitive it got j lings kcp vex i mean going through the kind of tempo of this what did it say to you teams starting to finally find their rhythm yeah, teams certainly fight, finding their rhythm. And I think a really important game for Jaylings as well. The first two Storm Point games, not good for them. 
but getting a, a no. zone that you know very well they drop over at overlook they win the zone over at overlook it's a great zone call for them they know the best place to play they're gonna get the best priority but the good thing about the what they did in that end game is it's very easy to sit and try and let the lobby do a lot of the work but if you can influence fights just by a couple of grenades poking up those stairs and especially if you've got the care package weapon in the re45 a team like aurora become less of a problem because teams are more inclined to try and push like kcp did to finish those kp so not only did they get the zone call right it was the management of how they played that end game and fully deserved win for them and i thought it might have been the catalyst story we saw kcp rocking the catalyst we saw aurora rocking the catalyst which i like they kind of pioneered it even last split and now we're able to bring it here i just think that what we're seeing too though is the re creo que falta una partida más aquí y sigue world's edge Anything definitive, or is this just hearkening more to the point that your play style is your preference? Yeah, I think play style and preference and the situations that you find yourself in with your rotations as well. Do you find yourself holding down more positions? If you do, then Watson perhaps is going to be more of a benefit for you. If you need to make rotations with cover, that Dark Veil and Catalyst is very much going to need, be needed as well. So we had, what, like seven Catalysts in that game, five yeah. Watsons in the game as well. So it's split pretty evenly between the two, but they can certainly make a difference. And we know why they're important. You need to have that ring console information. So you've got to play one of these legends that can do so. Well, let's talk, uh, take a look back at our final circle that just occurred in game number three. Mark, your thoughts on this, because it was set up for kind of a royal ending here. KCP, Vex, Aurora, Danish, Jay Lings all had a chance at this. Yeah, there's a few moments here that you'll see Aurora just take damage. They're Jay Lings, look at the kill feed there. Nags just pops up with the RE45, does some damage, and that just kind of encourages Pioneers to have a little look around the corner when that knock comes in. That's Jay Lings doing their job. It's perfect. They didn't need to do anything else because they knew everybody else was going to have to move before them. Zane from Pioneers goes up and does what he does, clears all of the high ground for them. But look at this Sky Nate that comes in right now. Zane has no idea. Nothing on his screen until now and then <laughs> it's just you know devastating to see you know, uh, stick the res you think you got the gold knocked down you're gonna win the game but that's the sky nates from j links and that's the difference and, and sometimes you know that's the moment that you just gotta say we've got one player down we've seen it before I'm, I'm just leaving you i'm going to finish this fight off i don't know what's gonna happen if i wait up here it's easy to feel safe they did the same thing to vex who felt safe dropping from the high ground that happened eventually to them through J-Lings. The low ground wins again, and so we'll have to see if that continues to be a theme, though. But looking at this game, yes, Vex, the big story. They did not make it. We will see the results in just a moment here coming up from game number three. But what did it say about start a fight, too? Having kind of a nice performance. They should be in second place based off what they've done, Dan. They've been showing up quite a bit here over these last three games. Yeah, I think start a fight top three for sure, and they've demonstrated they have what it takes to win some of the engagements they found themselves in the early stages i think that maybe they fell a little bit short in the latter stages of that game just because they were pushed right to the brink it was a such a tough rotation for all the teams uh you can see there that jaylings though they were able to take first place 17 points but pioneers putting 20 on the board which i think will push them up into second overall and leapfrog saf and put them in the conversation of match point the fact that vex didn't make it onto match point now opens it up because we're going to see two or three teams that could all make match point next one if they were to find a victory and of course vex still have three points to get there onto match point and that's not necessarily easy as you say we've seen teams not even get one point sometimes in their final game that's gonna be a tense situation here as we get to the top of the standings but at the bottom of the standings a totally different story mark i like phoenix legacy showing up they've been a consistent performer v2 we know they're dangerous alliance seem to find kills no matter what but teams like bitfix gaming that need the win not doing enough yet fire beaver is also a relatively uh slow game in world's edge yeah it's almost like a typo when you see Five beavers in 20th, right, with zero kills. It's just weird to see it, but you know you can't, can't you can't destroy everyone every game. It's a it's a very difficult lobby to do that in, and that's a question that five beavers are going to have to answer. We've seen them perform on Storm Point, a little bit of a disappointing game there. They did make a little bit of a, a strange counter rotation out of zone against traffic to tr then try and force their way back in, and kind of got caught off by Alliance. But I think you're looking at the leaderboards at the moment, yeah. and you, I, I keep looking at the bubble teams, the teams who need points, Aurora, Maestro, for esports, who are one of the teams who are holding down a spot. They're the teams you have to keep your eye on when it comes to qualification for LAN. But Alliance as well, not been a great start for them. Not a huge amount of points on the board. And with Vex playing this well, they're going to worry about first place being stripped away from them.
And I think another team that we have to keep our eyes on is Ascend as well. I mean, I'm going to come to that alliance point, but I'm going to set up this idea that is this a, a missed opportunity for a team that was just one match point game away from winning all of land? You've, you've got to perform here and use this as the trial for what you want to be in, in this upcoming situation in playoffs. We know you'll be there, but you still got to perform in these types of situations. I do have to agree, though, Mark, you know, Alliance, They've been a team that has surprised me in terms of how well they've come out this entire split. I think they've been one of, if not the best performing teams overall across all the regions. But it's also been the impressiveness of the creativity of their lineups. In implementing the Rampart, implementing the Ash, implementing now the Newcastle. What does it say, just because you brought it up, what does it say about how Alliance is performing today that's either not working or is it just about pace and just getting going? I mean, a couple of rough zones for them, I would say, that, uh, especially on Storm Point, the second zone, very tough one for the, them to get to. And that zone as well, you know, they've got to travel all the way from Thermal. So it's it's a very difficult zone for them to make their way to. It's almost surprising, though, to see, you know, you expect the Lions to get maybe top 10 with five or six KP on those zones because they're that right. good when they fight their way in. But I would say zones certainly come into it. Sometimes we could always go, you know, oh, Alliance aren't playing well. It's like, well, they've been really tough zones for Alliance to, to get points. So yeah. you kind of have to factor that in. You certainly do. And Ascend, Dan, just your thoughts on that, a team that we know was just a, a second away from winning it all in, in London in split one playoffs, now kind of having a, an unexciting performance. Is it just teams knowing that they're already qualified, taking it a little easier? Is it just things like maybe a little unlucky of a zone pull? What's your what's your idea on that? I mean, they got contested in games one and two. They got pushed they early did, in game this, number yeah. three. Like, That's right. Ascend are having a rough time. It's so hard to even blame them because they've just tried to survive. They've tried to escape. They've done the smart thing. They've not taken the fight when they've been down. They've taken the fight when they have been up, but then unfortunately it's taken so long because the other team delayed it that they've not really been able to play their play style. Ascend are so good because they rotate well. They know what positions right. to put themselves in and they've not been given that opportunity today. So I think that now they've seen the first three games go the way they have, they maybe have to be a little bit more aggressive in some of these contests and, and say, okay, we might be down, but we need to win this fight quickly. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to have the chance to play Apex Legends. I'm excited for the shakeups, gentlemen. It is, is really looking good here. I mean, we have a, a story that is still unfolding yet. No one's on match point. We've got probably one point away. For those who are waiting for our series results overall, we don't quite have those for you yet. So thank you so much for your patience. It is just a good reminder to kind of set the stage. We've got one more game on World's Edge that we will be playing before we transition back to Storm Point. And we have seen lineup changes with a little bit more of a catalyst being introduced here. We've seen certain teams pop off. And I got to say, one of the bigger stories in EMEA across all of it, Mark, was what ended up happening with IG, which turned into J-Lings, which ended up having Graceful, which went to Element 6, which ended up now re being replaced again. IG has done a really good job, excuse me, J-Lings, of <laughs> bouncing back, finding their rhythm, introducing Nags, which not as much of a, an IGL, a second IGL with Noises, but more of a slayer and maybe that piece that they needed to kind of get going. Yeah, I mean, there's no better way to put yourself in the shot window than one clip in three players in a row as a solo <laughs> on land. But, I mean, all of a sudden his stock just went, you know, stonks yeah. went like this. It was, there was no, no question being asked. But, you know, that, that's what they needed. You know, they, yeah. they have a great IGL. They, they have the pieces. They just needed that one player to help them win those fights. Because Dan and I were always talking, whenever we watched, went back and watched, you know, the VOD of IG, now J-Links, it was always, oh, they're making great rotations. They get into a great spot in zone, but they do it so quickly and they don't output enough damage that when a team gets into an engagement with them, they don't have their Evos leveled up. They don't have, like, advantages in a fight or a way to hold their own. And if you put a player like Nags in who's like, okay, I'm just going to, like, one-clip someone, then all of a sudden he's got, you know, your white shield goes to blue, your blue goes to purple, <laughs> and he can just consistently output damage for you. And... Sometimes it is as simple as that, and IG, I, you've got me doing it now. J-Links, 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 J-Links. Uh, they are looking very good, and that was a, that was a really important win for them because I always feel like when you get a zone that's going to your POI, you should win it, or oh, you should yeah. at least be in the top five because you're going to get that prior position. So I think just for J-Links, still J-Links, that was an important game just to get the momentum back. And, and you know what? It's actually almost a little bit more pressure. It's the game you got to win. People feel you should win. And there's this pressure to perform that uh, you, you don't have if you're, you know, you're already in an underdog situation. But great on them to show that they're in rhythm. However, for all of you who have been waiting patiently, thank you so much. Let's see how it stands after three in our match point final for our region of EMEA. Vexed Gaming do not do enough. They are three points away. Dan, I want to get your reaction to this as we stand after three. Yeah, as had they pushed themselves into that top three and maybe get that extra kill, they might have just been scraping through. But I think they knew when they went down to a two, 
it was going to be very difficult. It looked like there was the chance that maybe when they had those silos, but as the circle closed in, they think they realized they're not going to be able to play the high ground. They're going to have to take a fight. They were relying on other teams killing other teams rather than getting involved in the end. But with how they've been playing, three points, you'd think it's likely, but we have seen teams fallen for less, really, when they need just one or two. The Pioneers, though, take second place and now put themselves only 14 points away from match point as well. And for all the talk about previous IG, you've got Blasts on SI SAF. They're in 30 points in third place. So we're seeing some real performances now from teams who are, as Mark said, are on the bubble and need to perform today. I want to jump in really quickly here because there was kind of five teams I was looking at. like There's five teams here and I thought there's only two slots for them to kind of slot in when we're done mm -hmm. here for qualification for land maestro aurora start a fight gg and horizon and they're all kind of in and around the same kind of spot at the moment so it's not really yeah. nothing's really happened like nothing's really changed one game though that's the great thing right one game can completely change it it could rock you on the leaderboards especially with match point approaching and potentially two teams getting on it in the next game BCGO haven't had the best day, but they're in that spot too, tied for, I believe, ninth or 11th. And 2R1C, who we saw had that nice game too, uh, they ended up taking down KCP, swapping that extra three for the placement points. But it's very, very exciting to see all of these teams fighting for basically two spots, essentially, because they're that close. Okay, you guys know you've been seeing some top performers. Continue to let us know who is your Monster Energy MVP by tweeting at us or just tweeting who you think it is, as well as in the chat right now. Hashtag Phoenix, hashtag Zidane, hashtag Kashira, whoever you think should be the Monster Energy MVP for today. Also, here's another page as well, just so we can make sure we share some love to our Ys, our Zs, you know, our Xs. Don't always get love in the alphabet. They come so so late in it, but we appreciate you. You're still just as good as the A, Bs, and Cs, okay? We know it, and we love it here Unlucky. Also, big moment for him. Let's see if that can continue the run and get to match point. Challenger Circuit, you've heard the name twice. CC, we've got another win from Blue White. Flash, SSV, Synetic, Itanum. What a performance so far. They have made themselves a member of our LCQ, which is a 40-team tournament. It's going to be a double elimination format. Consists of our pro leagues and our non-qualified pro league teams and our Challenger Circuit squads in order to get to the championship. If you don't think this is important, remember our first one and remember Furia's performance. That came from the LCQ. So do not sleep on it. It's going to be very, very exciting. If you have what it takes and you want to get involved, make sure to sign up as we will put that information on the screen for you all. In terms of the dates, registration closing May 24th. And probably ending uh, Taurus season for all our Taurus friends. I know, Mark, you just had a birthday as well. Happy belated, my friend. And also May 23rd for Challenger Circuit number four. And that should do it for those who want to get involved. Hey, you never know who you might be. The next is Watson. The next, is there a tricky? I don't know. That's a uh, high praise, but it could happen to you. All right, we're going to take a little bit of a break as we head into game number four, our final game on World's Edge in our Match Point Regional Final. But... We had a nice moment where Mark was able to sit down and talk about one of my favorite features coming to Apex Legends Arsenal, and that is the brand new Firing Range. Check it out. It's time these worlds remember the name. August Brinkman. Something else that's changing as well that I am excited about is Firing Range. We've got a, a big shakeup in the Firing Range experience. Um, what's changing and what was the thoughts behind those changes? Yeah, so the firing range experience, we're actually trying to provide a better place to warm up and actually actually practice your the core skills of Apex, which is moving and shooting. So, you know, last season we added, you know, basically bought the infinite ammo, we added dummies that move around, but now we're adding dummies that can shoot back. Um, and the other thing too is we're changing the layout so you can practice more of your movement, practice uh, using the zip lines, using the zip rails, using the deploy balloon. And we're actually acknowledging that uh, the firing range is a place to do 1v1. So we've actually created an explicit 1v1 pit to try things out. We've actually added boxes there so you can swap your uh, ammo and uh, swap your guns out quickly in the middle of the match without having going back to the, to the weapon rack. And try to embrace that our, our, our firing range is a great place to pl practice and actually teach people how to play the game. WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. 
But I've got a question for you, Vicky, before we get into this next game. First, anyone that challenges into a 1v1. That's what I want to know. You. The new fire. You. Frame right, one. On. Frame one. <laughs> Frame <Set> one. <laughs> Vex. We need to see this. I, didn't expect I mean, that. I'm not gonna lie. You caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to throw it right back at you because sometimes you put us in the hot seat, all right? And we gotta throw back the heat. And I'm excited because after the action that we've seen so far, I'm ready to really dive into game number two. Throwing them as well. It's gonna be amazing. This is gonna be our next game on World's Edge before we flip back to Storm Point, of course. But we got to talk about Vex, right? I've been really oh, yeah. impressed with their approach so far. Two zones that they got good priority to on Storm Point played it perfectly. Um, excuse me, one zone on Storm Point they had access to great priority, played perfectly. Really smart, quick rotation on the second zone towards Mill. And then we saw them kind of change things up a little bit there, recognizing that they were going to have to play edge a bit more. There's a couple of teams kind of hovering in and around and still managed to pick up points, but just, just not enough to cross that threshold yet. So close, finishing what, in, with 47 points. Didn't get the memo that we saw from APAC North where they ended everything today with four games. Because now we are diving into that fourth game where they're just, what, three points away from hitting that match point area. And so Vex are looking like they're on another level so far. But then looking on the other side of things, you really see teams like Game and Gladiators. They're so close on that cusp as well. So many of these teams that need to start performing. J-Links, you guys talked about it perfectly. That is their POI and Overlook. You would be surprised if they aren't within that top five in a circle like that. But I want to be able to see some more of these squads come to life with better circle RNG. Talking about Alliance specifically as we dive into this final game of World's Edge before we make the swap up over to Stormpoint. It's going to be a fun game indeed. Question is, the big one, overriding question, can Vex secure match point? And I have to say, someone who's kind of been going about their business very quietly, although they certainly made a splash in that last game, Vicky, Pioneers, they could do it in oh, this yeah. game as well. Love to see that too from Pioneers, really popping off, playing off that low ground underneath the barrels that we saw Vex try to reposition in originally there too. Going to be able to see how this is going to play into how a lot of these squads want to uplift themselves with Vex Gaming being so close to that match point area. KCP being right behind him with 36 points. Start a fight. One of the teams that I've been looking at going into today, sitting at 30 points. So that's our top three so far as we take a look at where our teams are going to be going. I mean, look at Vex, by the way. They have just been blessed. Vex not only have a hot drop, they have a uh. hot zone. They also have both beacons. They're going to have all the information <laughs> in the world. And I'm waiting for this zone to pop, by the way, because if it goes towards Lava Siphon, this couldn't be set up any better for Vex to cross the match point threshold. It's going to be a very interesting game for everyone. Okay, they have to move a little bit, but still, they're going to have all the information they could possibly want. Mitro, though, one of those bubble teams we mentioned, also with some great access to this zone, but KCP as well here, Vicky, the chasing team who are trying to cross match point as well. Look at the zone for them. Oh, this is going to be fantastic for them. They're also going to have their own set of information as well as the replicator, which I believe just rotated out with the weekly rotations, allowing the mobile respawn to make their way inside of the replicator rotation too. So not only do you have that information, you have some great loot to walk away from from Lava Fisher, but you also have that replicator to work with too. As you can see, Sardell just looting the rest of Mirage. And Maestro, like you mentioned before, also having a good amount of information. And they can also circle keep if they hold this position here. Aurora, which are going to also start making their rotation away from Harvester over to the west. Yeah, better zone for Alliance here as far as Axis is concerned. They can hold down a couple of these chokes and like you say, kind of hold everybody out that's moving from the Harvester side of the map and behind them from Tree. So Alliance who have been quiet so far today, but as we know, history tells us that Alliance sometimes like to leave it late for a big performance, may have a little bit more of a better chance to do it in this one. But looking at the, uh, the contest that we saw last time with uh, Vortex and BFG, it looks like both teams have kind of decided to split Climatizer now. So a little bit of a line in the sand has been drawn. But Jaylings, who are trying to rotate quickly, are being chased right now by Thurnal. Oh. And it's look, not looking too comfortable for Noises. Noises is by himself while the rest of his teammates are now making their way from Overlook to give him some backup. A Thurnal with the only player that is Bambino rocking the fuse here. They're still rocking all white Evo, so they were really trying to chase down noises. You could hear the shots also getting shot at from Eternal from their back. That is J-Lings, and they have much better Evo shields to work with here. Two blues and one purple. 
Well, Vex just got a knock, by the way. And if they're able to convert it into a kill, that will be one of the points that they needed. Knocked off of that tally. They will be two points away from crossing the match point threshold. So really important to keep your eyes on that. And yes, they do secure it. Look at the kill feed. Matafe finishing off Bavis. So they now just need two points. But J-Links almost kind of got caught with their pants down a little bit on that rotation. Now find somewhere safe to play. They're inside a fragment on the construction building, which unfortunately for some, maybe happily for others, won't be here for too much longer. And they also get Fricks talking about Vex in the feed right now. This is crazy here as that one last player is trying to get away here in time. I believe Young Hong Kong was able to make the rotation over to Big Mod from where Vex initially was trying to contest them at exiting out of that lava siphon choke point. Jaylings now on the high ground though, looking down on a thermal as they're just waiting on the other side of the train tracks. Gonna start making that rotation though and getting ahead of Jaylings right through that tunnel side that leads into landslide. And you already know with teams like Fire Beavers who taste control all of Fragment West are gonna be able to also make the rotation into the side. Yeah, Jaylings early game reminded me of like, you know, when you sometimes you go on a night out and you see someone's kind of like, you know, a little bit of argy bargy goes down, and someone starts kicking off, and then all of a sudden you mate, the mates arrive, and it's like, all right, okay, all right, well, we'll calm it down a little bit now, because that was how it felt a little bit when the rest of Jaylings turned up. Speaking of uh, argy bargy, here's uh, V2 getting the first knock, and it's going to be Vortex, who, like we say, kind of decided with Bitfix Gaming on that contest to kind of split the loot, but well, they've run into some problems now, but V2 have lost joke. Oh man, Robin being able to get that knock here too, tossing up Black Hole, giving some suppressed fire. Ooh, the arc star hits and the thermal right, all right there, also being able to find some of this pink damage, but Zidane needs to be careful hiding behind that high ground so that way he could restabilize. Q not gonna hit, no reset on the shields, but those shots are pretty good. Can they finish the kill though? That's the question. Oh. A little bit of hit fire coming through. But again, not converting on the kills quite now. Should be an easy finish. And finally, V2 will finish that. So Vortex, who have had a rough time here on World's Edge, firstly with the contest. Secondly, with running into V2, find themselves the first team eliminated. I did see that they got scanned originally there by a close beacon. They are still going to have enough time and space to not only restabilize, but work with all the extra loot that are at their feet, thanks to Vortex. But 19 squads left now in the lobby after Vortex was the first one to go down here for this game, number four. But with the circle pulling all the way by Mirage, by the south side of Lava Fisher, they're going to start rotating from the north side, probably going to contest through Skyhook, where a lot of other teams like Fire Beavers who want that information in Grandma's building to try to meet up between E6 and V2. You said the word Fire Beavers, and all of a sudden I, I looked at my map overhead. I was like, V2, be careful, because Fire Beavers uh, <laughs> may be thinking about having a look at this. But one of the bubble teams, I kind of, they were my team to watch on the previous match day. Are on our screens right now. It's going to be GG. They're set up at the moment. They do have ring console information as well, so they know where that zone's going to be pulling. But the lobby's kind of played out in some ways well for them with the performance they've had so far today, because it's been a little bit slow. But with the point sponges in Vex and Pioneers at the top, it means it's still close on the overall standings for them. And if they can put in a big performance, it could just take one game because that big performance could shoot them up the leaderboards. And if match point gets hit and the team wins, then that could be the difference for these teams qualifying for LAN. I love how you point that out too, because now after that previous game, they're sitting in 14th overall with 71 points. With Vortex, that we just saw them go down, they're sitting at 72 points, just one point ahead of them. And then... 12 place we have danish with 73 points and aurora with 77 so that little gap between aurora and danish have been built up but it's still good enough for gaming gladiators to have that one pop-off performance to skyrocket themselves in the top 10 as we can take a look at the updated circle now we are going all the way over to the west side and look how many teams have already infiltrated that choke point that you see aurora making their way through it looks like KCP, I'm not sure if they're controlling the high ground of Mirage or if they're underneath in the buildings. It looks like they might be controlling the high ground. Maestro also in and around them. They're on the, uh, the kind of compound just outside. Have to be careful, those LOSs, of course, from height. But for KCP, I mean, they got a great zone. I talked about their priority to this zone being good. Well, if they have control of the top of Mirage, that is one of the strongest spots to hold down for this zone. They can fire down on everybody rotating in. And even though they're in second place, they don't need a massive game here. It just needs to be a pretty damn good one. If they can get into the top four, top three with some KP, then they could be crossing that match point threshold too. Such a good point, too, especially when you talk about the positioning that they could be holding there. Even if the circle pulls towards the east away from them where they're forced to give up that high ground, there's so much action that's going to be happening by Lava Fisher that they could use that opportunity to make the rotation. The one team that I'd be thinking about would be Alliance that has that high ground positioning from the north side of Thermal Station by that choke point that you currently see effects sitting on. Between them even fighting against Foot, 
that would still give some time over to KCP to make that rotation if it starts pulling away from them. So good spots all around as we take a look at Ascend on the other side, trying to find an opportunity to exit out of Harvester. Love how we also get to see the Wraith being played out here too. You guys highlighted in the pregame before we jumped into game number four about the duality and, and the different comps that we've been able to see from a lot of these teams making the swap between Storm Point and World's Edge. Yeah, it's interesting now that the point where the meta is, especially in EMEA, I feel like teams kind of play what their, their comfort pick is, and then if they notice something in the lobby with how other teams are playing or how other, other comps are kind of putting themselves together, you, it's, it's not too surprising now to see one of those legends being changed out to try and give them an advantage against some of the other teams' compositions that they're running. And I think that's what we're seeing here from... You know, a couple of the teams in this lobby at the moment, but one team who have got one KP and two KP, I should say, maybe they only need one more point is Vexed Gaming. And it's not too surprising to see them not go for a quick rotation here, play a little bit of edge when you only need one or two points to put yourself on that match point threshold. So that's just since they made their way around Lava Siphon, like we saw them get literally everything, taking a look at their Evos, you see Tyler with the gold. Squad does get scanned by the survey beacon, so they know where another team is in the distance as Matafi tries to take some shots. Jay Ling's in a fight themselves. They have the high ground advantage here, and they do get the crack initially. Yeah, V2 is the team on the other side of this fight as well, and this is going to be a fight that has to finish pretty quickly. The good thing for Jay Ling's is they do have, of course, the ability to redeploy with the Valkyrie if they need to. They have the height, so they shouldn't be shot out of the air too easily. V2, on the other hand, kind of in a sticky situation. Jaylings will hit the Valkyrie to try and overtake them. The question is, can they get away without taking too much damage? Sholos with some pretty good shots through the air. The Jaylings should be safe to land, but it looks like maybe not so safe. As Nax takes a fair bit of damage, but they do find somewhere here in Countdown to play. They can take a bit of a breather here as Nax is going to be able to pop that Phoenix kit. They got beams on the other side of Countdown by another team. Gets scanned here again by another survey beacon from a distance, so they'll know where that other team here is. But j have a nice rotation on the outskirts of the circle to gatekeep this other team that's still chasing them from right behind. Shows the importance of the uh, the Valkyrie sometimes as well. It's not just about, you know, forcing your way into a zone. It's about overtaking the traffic. If you can get ahead of the traffic, knowing the zone is closing, you are the team in the position to kind of command how those fights go down. You can put shots down and you can worry about your next move as other teams are kind of forced into into fights they don't really want to have to take. So j -Ling's with a with a good high IQ play, I would say they're hitting that Valk ult, ult, excuse me, a little bit earlier than V2 were able to do. And now Vexed, let's change over to them again because they're trying to force their way through this vault tunnel. But as you can see, some obvious signs here, Vicky, there might be someone in the area. <laughs> <laughs> playing around different angles with all these Watson fences. Oh, we're uh -oh. looking. He's going to fly away. Tyler does have the GG threat because he's got the gold R9, but they're giving away this space. You see, they're zero activated. Why would they want to contest this right here when Ascend has painted this entire tunnel with the Watson fences? I love Kashira, by the way. On the right. So used to seeing him on Crypto, but now he's got the freedom to just kind of do what he wants on the map. I'm excited to see what this impact can be for him. Ascend holding down this vault tunnel. We're going to have to do so for quite some time as well. Fire Beavers are on the other side of Ascend, though, inside of Landslide. They will be safe for this next zone, but being trapped between Fire Beavers and Vexed, I can't really think of many worse places to be. My biggest concern now moving forward is Vex Gaming with this rotation and with the noise that have already been made by this tunnel. You can imagine teams already on the outside of staging, hearing this action, could contest them in the middle of their rotate since I don't see them trying to contest through that tunnel. See Joke taking a lot of damage here too as 2R1C drop from the sky on top of V2. Nice to break the zero as well. V2 looking for some damage, looking for some bodies, but they can't find any quite now. Looks like the team that they were having a little scrap against has managed to move away to low ground and just giving you an update on where that zone will be going. You called it perfectly, Vicky. It has pulled away from Mirage over towards the train tracks now. So all of those teams who were saying in a great position, the likes of KCP, the likes of Aurora, Alliance, tough moves, tough zone pull for them. They're going to have to <laughs> leave pretty quickly. And it's that 50-50 rotation that now Alliance could take, though, since they didn't try to fully commit to trying to find the squads in Mirage as they take care of Danish. It's going to be our second squad, meeting right back to the lobby. V2 also have some pretty great loot to work with. Look at Zidane. He's got that RE45 in his hand. He's got the Nemesis dropping down some ammo that he needs to work with here, too. But it also looks like he needs some energy ammo for the Nemesis. So maybe running on some sticks out here while they take a look at what's happening inside these bunker doors. Also a very generous guy, Zidane. Gave the digi threat to his teammate off the RE45. Nice guy. Shout out to you. I don't do that. I would never do that. <laughs>
That's his you would be the one to try to grief. You would, you would grief Dan, I feel like. I would say to Dan, I need a digi threat because I need two. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take, take a look at the zone, Vicky. I mean, you can see right now, Eternal have ended up in pretty much the god spot here. Yeah, this is a really nice spot for them, but is it too early for this rotate is my question, because we know that Foot are going to be rotating on those training tracks. They want to hold on to the high ground. BFG, another one that wants to also try to find an opportunity to rotate in here without getting third party by either GG or Alliance. So there's going to be a lot of action in that congested spot to the south of where the zone is going to be pooling but with the action gonna, that's going to be going down between kcp maestro alliance is going to be shooting at them from afar they could try to also secure some kp to their name interesting to see what vex do as well vex still kind of trapped him how they want to play things because they're just thinking right now we just need hit match point right we just need one kp we just need a couple of placement points are they just going to ape someone and try and hope that they get that kp secured or are they going to try and play it a little bit more smart? Fire Beavers, though. We mentioned they were inside a landslide. Now they're going to have to make some moves. They were trying to hold out the tunnel team that was Ascend for quite some time as well. But now they realize with the zone moving, they're going to have to do exactly that as well. But look at the kill feed. They're going to have to do exactly that as well. But look at the kill feed. Fire Beavers are picking up some kills. And Ascend are going to be eliminated here. Eternal also involved in that elimination. So Fire Beavers now have the space to play with. And they will be safe too. Where else was Ascend going to go when they bunkered down in that tunnel for so long? You're stuck between Fire Beavers, you're stuck between Vex. You have only one direction to go with the circle pulling in, and Fire Beavers were able to clean that up nicely. Another team right in front of them, just secured with those Watson fences inside of uh -oh. that truck. Vex Gaming, though, in some trouble when they're just one point away from sitting uh -oh. at match point. And they're bang in the middle of a fuse oh. as well this is not the place to be i mentioned what's worse than being trapped between vex and fire beavers maybe in the middle of a fuse hole would be the answer down on the low ground they survive for now but gg have to make their move and this is a massive moment for them they have to cross but bitfix gaming they're just sending down traces from above this is what I was worried about, especially with Eterno with the early rotation on top of these train tracks. These teams had no other choice but to rotate in this direction, and if they wanted the priority on the high ground, they were going to meet up with BFG, who was right behind them. Vex Gaming now healing from... 1kp is all you need. One point overall is all you need. However, with so many teams in the vicinity, just with high ground all around them, what is the play here for Vex? They can't really wait until zone moves and everyone else has to make a play because they're on that low ground and everybody has got line of sight onto them. If they get out of this situation, it will be quite something. Maybe Tyler has to make a play. Smoke a team off. See if they can cross. Mark, 1kp or top 15. That's all they need to sit at match point. It's crazy here. While they're running for their lives, see Bambino sitting out that fused cluster grenade here too. Unlucky just trying to heal up with the Phoenix kit oh the grenade also at their feet this is crazy oh. look how low their health is oh this is like some horrible looking popcorn right now inside of this little uh shipping crate the fuse queue coming in the knuckle cluster causing damage but vexed survive and i think that tyler said i've had enough i'm gonna try and pick up the kp myself but he throws the game he's gonna go down and it's all up to unlucky now oh look he's like where are you going they were 16 equipos, bro. 16 equipos ahí. To try to pick up a straggler now unlucky knows exactly where the other team is they know unlucky's by himself no! he gets a knock though he one clips him with a gold r9 he's still got to dance around the fuse and the cluster of grenades getting hurled in his direction but can he finish the kill that's the question can he finish the kill because right now that point is still away 15. 15 for vex they get the one point that they need unlucky just survived and that might be the one clip he talks about for quite some time there's oh, another oh, one oh. Oh, if it isn't enough, you gotta be the nail in the coffin here. Vex feeling themselves now, not only being top 15, but also cleaning up the KP that they need as they are ready to sit at match point. And by surviving, Vex now in the top eight. Look at that kill feed, it just went crazy. Vex eliminated, GG eliminated, V2, 2R1C, all gone. And Maestro, one of the bubble teams, survive here while all of the carnage goes down on the other side of this mountain range. SAF moving in as well. Two bubble teams fighting as the cat wall is going to maybe be the difference here. Ooh, tax. Dancing around the gen real quick. Oh my goodness, he was going crazy. Rugby with a punch. He needed to try to heal up and also get some extra ammo. Maestro get wiped out. Top five left here to start a fight. Another team that's in our top three with 37 points. Still racking up some extra KP as Alliance cleans them up. We talked about the bloodbath that was going to go down in this area alone. Being so open and having to shift away from Mirage.
Look at the position of Jaylings as well. Maybe thinking about going back to back here. Fire Beavers though. Trying to make some plays. Maybe thinking about a push. They're going to destroy everything that that Watson had spent so much time, care, and attention setting up in the fences. The EMP destroys all of it. And Fire Beavers looking to now capitalize with some shots into the truck onto Jaylings. But I think the, the point is Alliance now only has a two. We mentioned they love to leave it late. When they find a little bit of form though, and that train starts rolling, Alliance are difficult to stop. The Alliance with Hawkins and Yuki still up and alive on the other side. Thernal on top of the train tracks. Jaylings, they've been able to set up the perimeters on the outside of those three pillboxes here too. The serial has been called in as Alliance find an opportunity to try to rotate from the low ground here. Unseen and unheard. Jaylings maybe trying to call him out as Hawkins goes into Noise's line of sight. Oh, he's going to go into the LOS, but the good thing for Hackers here is he can afford to do it. He's playing on a legend in Newcastle. He's going to have a deployable cover. He's going to be able to use the ultimate if it's available as well to give himself survivability in this situation. And that could be a big difference here. Fire Beavers, they're going to smoke out the truck, though. They want Jaylings. Hey, if I enter, in. Let's hit Let's hit They see right through the smoke. See the missile storm also coming in right here too, but fire beavers can't overextend you. They can't give up this ground, but they have no choice but to move forward with the circle closing in behind them. So like Jaylings have actually left and moved to the other side of this truck, and fire beavers kind of a little bit perplexed there. Question marks appearing over the top of their heads. Jaylings now know where they are, and fire beavers now know where Jaylings are as well. Noise is up on the height. They're surviving for now, but fire beavers are hitting some big shots. Playing head and seek around the side of the corner of this truck here too. Nice goes incredibly low though. Noises. Finding the opportunity here, he's getting in for the reposition right underneath the lip of the rock. A little bit of M&K action going down, Fire Beavers holding their ground for now, but Fire Beavers also... Nice, and win man lose out of the ...is the controller that comes in and does the damage, Fire Beavers eliminated, Alliance eliminated, Eternal now moving on Jaylings to try and close out this game. It's a 2v3 by the looks of things, Bambino, he smells blood in the water here, Vicky. And with the comp that they're rocking here too, the fuse and the ash now as they're looking to clean up what is left of J Links here. Bambino is the finishing blow as the Thernal are your champions for game number four. Well, well, well. That makes things very interesting, doesn't it? Vexed, most importantly, cross the threshold for match point. KCP, I don't think they got enough points on the board though to make it. Alliance start to find a little bit of form, however, which could be interesting when it comes down to that story. Who wins overall when this Pro League split is done? But Eternal coming out of nowhere. And uh, is that the first Fuse win we've seen in Pro League so I, far this split? I would not be surprised, especially seeing the fact that they're the only team that we've seen uh, rock the Fuse out here. Um, and sticking through it, too. It's nice also to highlight the gap between Vex, who are now sitting at match point with, what, 53 points with those last uh, KP that we saw them clean up at the very end, and then KCP sitting in second with, like, 39 points after that game. So what a gap there's been already built up after those four games, and Vex gaming have a little room to be in, but they can't be too comfortable. Yeah, I mean, th th we got to talk about the Vex game because it was like you could see there was a real – dichotomy and how they wanted to approach it. It's like, do, do we just yeah. play for these couple, couple of KP? Do we try and play in, in, in a position where we're going to rotate to zone? And then then didn't really do either. They got caught in a really a tough position. But I've got to say, who was it inside of the bin? I can't remember off the top of my head. Who hit that I think it was unlucky. It was, it was unlucky, unlucky, I believe. Here is the pivotal moment. Great work from production here to give us this moment, <laughs> Vicky. Because we talk always about, you know, rotation. We talk about team fighting ability of teams. Sometimes you just have to live long enough for the rest of the lobby to do the work for you. 17 squads remaining. Keep your eye on that top right. By the time that Unlucky falls, I think we were down to nine? I, I honestly, after this entire fight, yes, because it was all the teams that had to get out of that southern choke point by that train tracks that fell under. And it was a Thurno who came out winning that side of the circle here. You can see Unlucky, this is the moment where he was about to get the one clip here. While also, by the way, getting creeped by Bambino on the high ground with a plethora of grenades that he's sending in his direction. Look at that. 140 cleaned him up. And that was Foot also going down as E6 met them in the lobby right behind them. And that guaranteed the points that they needed to get to 50 and be our first team on match point. Rain Day, a lot to talk about. But i got to say that moment, it was a pivotal moment. And it was a, a lot of fun to watch in cast. Oh, it was fun to watch. I'll tell you that. I'm sure casting even better. So exciting to watch how Unlucky was able to put Vex over that threshold. And I, we called it. I mean, it's not easy.
easy. There was a moment you thought it was going to go the other way, but they survived. They outlast and uh, they outwitted. That's my little survivor pun here. Let's bring Vicky back in, Mark. Take it easy. Great call there. Vicky, digesting that game. Uh, so many things could have happened. I think the ending was just as surprising as the middle with Unlucky. The ending, seeing an Ash, a Fuse, and a Seer win? I mean, what kind of funky stuff is this? What do we got going on here? Hey, they're taking everybody. It's not Fragment, it's it. Funky Town. Yeah, I love it, too. And I love <laughs> it when uh, when a lot of these teams play into what they feel like is comfortable. When you get the mix-up yeah. and take away from the usual Valk, Seer, Catalyst, I like that. Introduce that gear, especially when we make the transition into World's Edge. But also, we got to highlight the rotation. They held their ground on top of those train tracks and were able to get involved in this final fight when Jay Leans had lost out and JMW. So what better way to now move in after you see Elias get taken out here too. Fire Beavers had just met them right afterwards. Fire Beavers also, by the way, very consistent in these yep. late games. But Othernal took the opportunity, wasted no time here, and were able to see that it was just two of the members of J-Lings up and alive, so they were able to just clean up the rest of the lobby. And this is smart too. I mean, Josh, he does wait a little bit, hits a med kit, but they both move in, and you can see how it's over. If Ash hits you with a tether, that's what Alliance was experimenting with. That's what we even saw the concept of before her buffs coming in mid-season, that we saw Aurora playing Ash, Fuse, and Bangalore. But this is a little bit of a different situation. You saw that it worked for Eternal here. You saw the mid-fight. You saw the rotation capabilities. Don't under misunderestimate how Ash's ultimate can get them and keep them to those high grounds and relocate in these circles where Maybe you just are a little bit out of position and you need that fast displacement. Eternal, great job showcasing some legends we haven't seen in a while. Jay Ling's keeping it up as well. Fire Beavers and Alliance and Starfight Esports continuing to be really, really consistent. Phoenix Legacy starting to wake up too. On the back half, 2R1C fighting for one of those spots in that ninth to 11th place. So is Aurora and of course, Horizon Union who have not found anything here but I, vicky you know reacting to this but also looking forward to a team that got the highlight this time around eternal i want you to look at some of those stats that they've put together but also just talk to me about did, did they really have a chance to take this here they're playing like a team that could win they're playing amazingly with 10 kp to their name and the dub on top of that yeah we make the transition now next over to storm point so can that consistency stick with this team i mean i'm expecting the comms to change up as we make that move over to storm point but we'll be able to find that comfortability that they obviously have found right here with the fuse and the ashes here and you can see the role that the seer is playing in terms of the information and not mm. needing to be involved in the damage 250 damage that's okay he, he's he's got the four assists he's got the ability to get in there and give them the info they need vex gaming becomes our very first team ladies and gentlemen on match point for those watching at home what does that mean it means if they win it's game over the standings are as they are right now if they win one more time but that does mean there's one more game at least for these teams to make a move a team like horizon union which i highlighted does not want to be sitting in 15th place here. There are other teams beneath them. Danish, Maestro, Gaming Gladiators, 2R1C who are ahead of them, V2 behind them as well. Thernal, start a fight. These teams are looking in a pretty good position to jump right now. So you've got to start making it happen, Vicky. Absolutely. I talked about it earlier with Mark when we were talking about the game and the teams right now that were on the cusp before that final game, teams like Aurora, Danish, Vortex, one of the first teams that we saw go down in that previous game. Game and Gladiators who were so close, that cusp between 11th all the way down to 15th are so close and this game determined a lot here for the squads that are on that cusp that want to be in the top 10 and with Vex Gaming already sitting at match points, they should start sweating a little bit now that we make that move over to game number five. And the question is, Aurora, is it enough? Eighth place. Oh, stories just keep getting better and better. I hope you all are enjoying it as well. We've got a quick break coming up, but guess what? Right after this, we go back to Storm Point to see if Vex can close it out here in our game five or if someone else will start to make this their legacy today. We'll see you in just a moment. It's time these worlds remembered the name August Brinkman.
Welcome back, everybody. It's time for us to get back on to Storm Point in World's Edge. Take a well-earned break. And Dan Gaskin is going to be joining me once again. Dan, a pretty crazy last game. Vex just about managed to scrape through by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, I was watching with bated breath. Would they get that extra point? Was it going to be via placement? Was it going to be via kills? And just about held on. I think they were just desperately watching that kill feed, hoping that teams were going to be eliminated. Uh, but eventually they get there. So now it's all eyes on Vexed. Can they get the job done here on match number five? And you know what that means? We're changing maps. We go back to Storm Point, which I will say hasn't been as, as successful throughout the season for Vexed. But we do already see them having a victory today in match number two. We do indeed, and they've been involved in two end games as well, which is even better news for Vex fans. A real opportunity if the zone gives them a chance to maybe close things out here in match number five. It would be a hell of an effort to make it in ma to match point in four. I mean, it's been a great effort to make it to match point this quickly, but to close it out in five, Dan, one of the quickest ones we've seen. Yeah, I mean, we've seen well, ESA do it in five. We've seen Fnatic do it in four. Uh, in Amir, it traditionally goes a little bit longer, and the average would be around seven, but... With how Vex are playing, they have the advantage now. They have a free hit at trying to, to go for a victory here and maybe can try something a little bit different. They don't have to be too crazy. They don't have to worry about any other teams. They don't have to worry about who's dropping where. They can do whatever they like. Now, we've seen teams in this scenario try to do two different approaches. The kind of approach of let's just stick with what we've done and hope it carries on or the complete flip of now we change to a different composition. Now we try and avoid everyone's eyes and now we try and hope that they don't notice us when we're making our rotations. Yeah, just to give you an update on what's happening elsewhere as well. We know that Vex are the team who are on match point. It's somewhat of a free hit for them, knowing that no one else is on match point. But the rest of the chasing group, it's so, so tight now. You've got Pioneers on 39. They need 11. Jaylings, 38. SAF, 37. Firebeavers, 37. So you would imagine in this lobby, there's going to be maybe two teams joining them if those teams perform. So for Vexed, it's almost a case now of this becomes probably the most important game of the day for them, knowing that they are the only team who can win it right here, right now. Yeah, it is going to be an extra element of pressure, and it's going to be can they deal with that pressure as well? Are we going to see Vex to do it in five, or are we going to be heading into match six, maybe match seven? We could be going until match 15 for all we know. That's why this format is so incredible. But certainly it's all eyes on Vex gaming off the drop. All eyes on Vex Gaming. All eyes on where that zone's going to be going as well. Will it be favorable for Vex? Or will it be one that they're going to have to work extremely hard to get a win on the board? Keep in mind as well, we've got all of those qualification spots for the split two playoffs on LAN over in London, which is going to be here before you know it, on the line in this lobby. And the, the fascinating thing for me is SAF feel, feel like they're the only team on the bubble who's really performed so far today now. And honestly, it might be a situation for SAF where they say, we wouldn't mind if Vex win it here because they're already in the top five. They're in a position where likely they would be finding themselves at LAN, at playoffs. But suddenly if Vex don't win, there is more games where teams start to catch up SAF if they don't perform. It creates a very strange dynamic here as Ascend once more are going to be challenged off the drop by Bitfix. Well, Bitfix, uh, I'm going to say they're being aggressive here dan i think that's fair i've just seen three <laughs> of them dive off of the height to get the knock onto lufka i mean if you're going to take any of that uh ascend out i would say lufka probably the best one to get first but certainly have given up the high ground and might be giving up a situation where it becomes a 2v2 very quickly alternator here for post kill i stand by the fact though by the way whenever i'm contested in ranked if i have an alternate i've never lost one Fancy of the best weapons Ascend to start with. Yeah, well, we'll see if Ascend can kind of prove that theory, although they've already lost one, so maybe not ah, the best don't worry. time to Those tell that story. There. This is going to be a tough situation, though. Three versus two. I mean, the weaponry is not great. Alternators around and Mozambique's in the back pocket, but in a three versus two with Bitfix all running as a three, it looks like this time they are finally going to be able to shut down Ascend. Remember, they've had a back and forth throughout the early two games where Bitfix had the advantage over Ascend, Ascend escaped, then Ascend took down Bitfix in game number two. Well, in chapter three, it's going to be all about Bitfix gaming and how they eventually shut them down. But the good news is my theory kind of tracks because both teams had alternators, so it was never going to be one team who came out on the bad side of it. You know what I mean? But BFG, they're going to uh, oh, win this one. Kishera, he's out of there. He might be able to survive, you know, even though the finishes have come in. We have seen Ascend, I've called it... <laughs> affectionately i must say the cockroaches of this lobby so far every time i say it, i'm like could have chosen a better example here but they have survived and they have been able to play the game even though it's been a bit of a rough start for them but looking elsewhere we are going center zone it looks like a waterfall zone at the moment 
Cascade falls. Jay Ling's in a really good spot moving down from checkpoint to play the northern side of it. Vex with good, pretty good priority to this zone as well. You can see they've been held out at the moment by the winners of our previous game, Eternal. So this could be a really interesting battle early on. So a victory for Pioneers, Jay Ling's, Fire Beavers, or SAF would be enough to take them into match point. So I think Vex need to be aware of that, that if they do not win here in match number five, it's highly likely we're going to see another team join them. Although we have had situations like this where we've had four or five teams that are very close to match point, and then suddenly they all flop. And we'll see some of the teams that are struggling really start to take risks. They change their composition. They start to maybe be a bit more aggressive. Bitfix Gaming, for example, we can see the aggression they just had off the drop. And then they have their big games and suddenly they propel themselves up the leaderboards and they become a team that might actually be able to challenge those who are at the top. And it can be frustrating for those who are fighting at the top. Speaking of the top, it's Vex Gaming. It looks like there is a team that is very close to them here. Yeah, they don't just hold them out at the moment. And just judging by what you're looking at, attachments, general inventory for Vex, it looks like they wanted to make a quick rotation here and they're being slowed down on doing so. So Eternal causing them some problems, and I think Vex want to make them pay for that. The Zero is going to go down. Well, that's going to be destroyed immediately. Tyler with a really big play, but they've got to capitalize now, and Matafe will get that first knock. Unlucky will move in, and we know he ain't been missing too many bullets, Dan, today, and he looks like he might be able to clean up the last two players. That will be a third. Yeah, win that round. The perfect start here for Vex. And not only do Vex, you know, take down another team, but they take down a team who was a threat, really. Eternal have just won a game. They're on 30 points. They were closing in on match point themselves. But I love the fact that Vex take the fight. So many times I've seen teams get onto match point and then just avoid fights and just say, oh, oh, we have to make sure we get into central zone. We can't take any fights. What if we lose? Vex know that they can take on anyone in this lobby on any given day. And they show their dominance. They show their confidence. And that is going to be the best way that they will find a victory now here on match point. Over to checkpoint then. You can see Vortex and 2R1C playing down the lines. For a potential battle robin's really important in this fight as well you can see he's holding down that central structure you can get so many good angles that allow your teammates to push off off the back of it to r1c kind of hold up though you can see but elsewhere on the map i just want to kind of highlight quickly who's got um, probably the best position in zone right now and it's going to be gaming gladiators and for comeback stories to be made dan there's kind of the you kind of i've got a kind of emotional attachment to them for what they've been through how they've had to kind of progress missed out on the last land you just want to see them do well and this might be the game with how close it is on the bubble that they could do well here and maybe that one game could be the qualifying for lamb game it it is a case when you're in match point and you're maybe not one of the teams who is going to win on the match point day but all you need is one big game that can get you 25 plus points. It puts you in the top five, and that could be enough to propel you in the overall standings to get you into that top 10 for LAN. Now, for Gaming Gladiators, maybe has to be something a little bit more significant, like a top three. But certainly a victory and a big game would do that for them. And they have the potential for it. You're completely right. I think everyone would echo that statement that there's almost that gut feeling you just want to see them succeed. We'll have to see whether they can follow up with it. It's Horizon Union down to just two, and they're... Very much just trying to stay alive at this point, but they're being bombarded by E6. E6 just causing them all sorts of problems at the moment. And for Horizon Union, what an unfortunate turn of events has been for them in previous weeks. They were the team who were kind of holding down one of those last quali qualification spots. But coming into today, after a very, very poor last match day for them, now once again find themselves maybe in danger of being overtaken by those bubble teams we were talking about and missing out. And if E6 can eliminate them here, which they are desperate to do, by the way, well, they will be eliminated because SAF are just going to come and pick up the easiest KP of their life. Then they, <laughs> that will be, again, a rough game for them where they might see those chances slipping through their fingers. Yeah, Horizon Union are seven points ahead of SAF, for example. They're three points ahead of 2R1C and VCGO and eight points ahead of Aurora. So there are three or four teams I've just named there who are all performing well today, who all could be picking up points, and they all could leapfrog the likes of Horizon Union who could drop out of the playoff places, which is really a, an unfortunate situation to find yourself in when, as you say, you are so close, you are on the cusp, and you could almost taste land, and then it just gets ripped away from you. We'll have to try and keep an eye on it, but it's very difficult to try and work out these points totals when it could all end here. Vex are still alive. Vex are still within the chance of winning the regional finals. And remember, if Vex do win the regional finals, that would mean that 10th spot in the overall standings would then be opened up to someone to qualify as well. Another team's in a great spot in zone. is going to be 
KCP, Pioneers Bang Center alongside GG for now. And I'm going to ask you a question I think I'm going to regret here, but what do you think Lan tastes like? I think Lan tastes like marshmallows mixed with Good butterflies. Stuff. I've Good never stuff. eaten a butterfly, but I'd have to imagine that would be what it tastes I would, like. I would have lost a lot of money on that being the right uh, on the answer you gave. <laughs> Maestro though down on the low ground at the bottom of the waterfall. E6 being forced off of that high ground that we saw them holding down a few moments ago. Maybe thinking about trying to force Maestro away from them, but the Digi threat and the interception pylon are going to give Rugby a really solid anchor position to play from here. But E6 wants some of it. They're up for the fight here. E6 are very much up for the fight. That's because they've already qualified for LAN and Case Winnie on the Octane as well. As Maestro get eliminated, Maestro who were, you know, in that bubble situation who needed points today, find another game where they fall short as E6 just trying to get back on their feet here. Yeah, the team trying to take the height off of them as well, but good shots coming in almost allowed them to retake height themselves. Phoenix Legacy, I think, with the team, yes, indeed, who did take that zip line. And Alpha Drafts has to be extremely careful to use their shield cells to get back up to full health, but on the top of this waterfall, this is a zone where they might be able to get a nice rotation into where the zone is going to be pulling, but E6, you're looking at the armor checking at the moment. You're seeing two reds, you're seeing two golds. E6 is in a good position to pick up points here. Absolutely, and they need them. I mean, it's been a pretty slow start for them. I say they need them. They don't really. They're already out land. They've got what they achieved, but you they still want to be... Money, Dan. They want exactly. to get the leaderboards. You want to be higher up on the leaderboards for A, more money, and B, a better seed going into LAN as well. You're not going to see an engagement, though. 2R1C taking the fight against V2, but it should really end up as nothing here. When you have those blast doors in the way, usually you just back off from one another because it becomes a bit of an awkward dance, almost as awkward as mine at high school. But now 2R1C will have to take another fight on the other side here. 2R1C are going to have to be careful because there's a couple of other teams in the vicinity, and I think that one of them is Alliance. The zone is starting to close as well in 20 seconds, so decisions have to be made. Exacto with some beautiful shots with that R99, though. Can he get the knock? Yes, he can, and there's going to be Noth from Foot Esports who goes down. Good news for all the other bubble teams because they have been the performing bubble team so far. 2R1C. Just demonstrating that they can be aggressive, but now this is the time for V2. As soon as they heard all of that commotion, they said, all right, we can open up the doors, we can open up the curtains, and we can start to have a look at this one. But to all one c should be able to avoid the sight lines, and it really is going to depend how aggressive V2 want to be here. V2 able to reset. So I'm going to be closing, got quite some way to go, but it looks like the decision has been made to go back into the wall and maybe craft a few med kits. But they've also found a rat, and that's a problem. Life in gets one. Takes a huge amount of damage, and that should be the end of foot esports. But that is very interesting as far as the overall stand is concerned now, Dan. We mentioned that foot esports have been the performing bubble team so far in the games that we've seen. But them falling early outside of the placement points, and I'm pretty sure they had no KP as well. That will open the door for the likes of GG, Maestro, if they can have a good game here, to really put the pressure back on. Yeah, I mean, Foot Esports down in 18th now, and they really will be struggling, especially if it, it were to end here. They just give all of the opportunity for all of those teams to take those positions away from them, and they won't have that chance to be able to take a top 10 position and take a LAN spot. So when you are one of those teams that gets eliminated in these stages, you are just hoping Vex do not win to give you one more chance of trying to get some more points or, of course, give yourself a chance of getting closer to match point. But if you are that far off, if you are about 40 points off, you're not thinking about match point. You're thinking about just trying to get as much as you can to go up the leaderboards. Well, Cascade Falls is looking a bit busy right now. Vortex up on the high ground. We'll be safe for that zone to close. Zero is down as well, trying to cancel maybe one of those players down on the low ground. But Vucic's going to be very careful here. And isn't careful enough as E6 poked their head in it. Slayers from distance with that scout. Such worrying times for a lot of these teams because I think when you are going into match point game... Oh, oh my god, why are you crafting right now? You surely know there's a team right there. Well, at least you can Newcastle away at the very least. That was a little bit concerning. That was Alliance. And it was obviously Alliance due to the... Newcastle being in effect, maybe they were just trying to craft a banner there, get a teammate back in. Yeah, it looks like maybe effect isn't alive. E6 though, under some pressure. I want to go back to talking about where this zone is going. It's very interesting. I mentioned KCP and GG, how they're in great spots. There are so many teams outside of the zone on the north side that you would imagine from 16, we're probably going to go down to 9, you would imagine, by the time this zone closes. Yeah, because there is about seven, eight teams that are all outside of the circle right now. We're all going to be pushing in at the same time. There you go. There's the map overhead. Thank you, observers and production. 
Look where Vex are, though. They're going to be holding the building at the moment. They're going to be a comfortable enough spot, but very close to them is KCP. And KCP are just slowly but surely getting closer towards match point. We'll see what happens here, though, between V2 and VCGO. The battle of the Vs happening in this building. Frag grenade can certainly do some damage if it's rolled properly. Oh, Excel. Find a little bit of time for that to be popped as well. Zidane's looking to maybe hit the Horizon Ultimate, the black hole through the window, or try and trap a few players in corners, or maybe they're just waiting for that Seer Ultimate to come back so they can make an effective push. They get the info. The black hole becomes more effective as well. Black hole goes down. Nades go in as well. Are they going to be able to get the damage off the back of it? Yes, they are. Zidane looking for blood now as they move in. V2 with the advantage in this fight. Yeah, V2 should be able to at least take advantage of that damage as well. And they will. Vortex were getting shot from elsewhere. E6 in the distance just doing damage. And VCGO unfortunately will fall in 16th place. So we're into the top 15. Everyone gets a placement point. But round three is closing, which means we're going to start to see this kill feed get lit up. Fire Beavers doing what they do. Turning up dressed in red. How many times have we seen this assault from Fire Beavers on a building? Cyril's going to go down. Taskmaster uh -oh. gets absolutely decimated as he pokes his head in that door. And now Fire Beavers, who probably felt like pretty confident in this situation, are going to have to try and hold off a push that's coming in. They're not going to be able to do so. They went for the res and Big Fix Gaming, causing problems to this lobby once more. They will wipe Fire Beavers. One thing I learned in match day number nine was that Bitfix Gaming can roll with the big dogs, and they just took down some of the biggest of dogs in this lobby. Now V2 are going to be making their way towards the circle, but as soon as you go through this building, on the other side of it are Vex, but already you've got to get through one team. 2R1C eliminated, but Vex are going to be there, primed and ready. SAF having a look at this as well. So V2 got to make some decisions. You can see the Vex to sell. <laughs> Almost like a round of S&D for them at the moment, just playing some head glitches, waiting for people to poke. Alliance eliminated as well. Ascend go down alongside them. SAF Esports will go down as well. And that might be a little trigger here for Vex to have a look at this. See if they can capitalize on some of the KP is available. V2 move all the way around. E6 gets taken out of the lobby eventually after their involvement to help V2 with the fight against VCGO. The trouble for Vex is... Look where that circle goes, by the way. It's going to be shifting far away from them. It's going to be going heavily west, which means Vex have to get through KCP. KCP, who are currently in second place, only nine points away from match point. That could be a huge fight, not just for the likes of Vex trying to survive and getting to match point, but for KCP's chances of getting onto match point. I did say the lobby would go down to nine, right? You did. Wow. And I'll give you credit for that. That's you did ridiculous. some good math for once. That is a guess of all guesses. Anyway, <laughs> Vex, like you say gonna have to try and force their way through kcp and this is a, a very interesting fight the team who's on match point versus the team who are closest to them and trying to cross over oh, the flesh damage is there but it's not enough to get that knock pioneers are gonna have to move as well here and it's a perfect time for us to jump into the comms with pioneers and see what their next move's gonna be I just know if it's yeah i mean yeah but they're queuing over, queuing over. They're queuing over. Can we 51 DP? on him. Yeah, yeah move coming. up. Tell move up, move up, I'm move going, up here, going, move up I'm here, going, move up here. Yeah. Stain, look at her back real quick. I'm gonna hold her back right now for, for like, just for now. Yeah. Nasky, you play this building. They're on her back, on her back, on her back. No, they're not, they're not. A hundred on back. Yeah. They're, Nasky, they're deep in, bro. They might There's come through one. the wall on me. Nasky, they're gonna push us. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm flying up. Come back, please. You might need to. They're ready to come back. Flying up. On me. Coming. Right below me. Yeah, one's right below him actually. Bro, one guy's flying up on me. Though. Flying up on me. Flying up on I'm me. I'm watching him, I'm watching him. I'm holding him to drop. No, 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 flesh! Guys, please. Inside, inside. Yeah, yeah, can we push Dropping. now? I'm dead from the charge, man. Push, yeah, guys. You. Can you open the door? Yeah, opened it. Play I'm inside, Janet, Janet. Only back one back inside. Back. I'm blocking door, I'm blocking door. Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. You vibe, you vibe. They broke my serial. Eh, no, son las ALGS de, de Europa. Hola, dale. Push up for bottom. Go left. I think. Perhaps it may. Um, no, you can't yeah, even I'm do that. Also under pressure here, Dan. Even though they managed to get the kills they needed to get to zone, Vex now are in a tough spot. And it's Aurora who are flying at them. 
and the Aurora going to keep this match point day alive because Vex get eliminated in eighth position. What a push from Vex. It has to be said to stay alive themselves and take down KCP and stop KCP from getting on to match point. But now suddenly all eyes over to what can happen for the rest of this game. Bitfix Gaming still alive. Phoenix Legacy have gone down, as have GG. But Bit Bitfix have just about managed to stay up as a two. Bitfix as a two. GG have gone out as well. Jaylings eliminated two. And Bitfix now are going to have a horrible surprise as they open the trap door. And the trap door releases Aurora towards them. Aurora, who need this game. They need a big game day to qualify. They are outside of the qualification spots. They were a first place team in the previous split. And now they find themselves in a different situation, Dan. And they are turning up what they need to. And it's looking entirely likely that no one will join Vex on match point unless V2 were to find a victory whilst killing the rest of this lobby. Because at the moment they find themselves on 40 points. Aurora doesn't look like they would get there, but they're going to be close. But now they're going to take the fight. Ranch is taking a lot of damage. Cleave goes in to clean things up. Should be able to do so and does so. But where are the rest of the players in the lobby? Where are V2? Are they able to close the gap in time? It looks like Aurora have got healthy enough. And V2 kind of a little bit split at the moment. And they're going to have to back up. Zidane might be caught off guard here. Both of these teams are going to be ever so close to 50. But probably not enough to be able to get on to 50. Just because of the only available placement points from all getting first. And only three from KP but they are going to put themselves within touching distance of it. What's going to be important here is to try and stop the points being gained from the other team by solidifying this victory. Now, V2 are arguably on the low ground here, but Ranches is trying to make a flank round. If he gets spotted out, this could be terrible for Aurora. I mean, the problem for Aurora is they just spotted. don't have zone. Zone's forcing them in. Cleave and Sunset have got to do something magical. Only 21 bullets in the RE45. I thought it might be the difference maker. He can't even get one as the bat is popped just in time. Cleave, you've got some work to do. You're a hell of a player, but it's not going to be enough to see you through. Well, the GG's. Bueno, muchachos, vemos en la noche. Se les quiere, se les quiere. Getting to match point, so it's going to be agonizingly close for V2, but... That being said, they are only two points away, and there's only one team on match point right now. So V2 putting themselves in position going into this next one. To